infinite complacency, people went to and fro over the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. intro you guys because not not because it, it's not because you're not accomplished or anything it's because i i know you i've been talking to you guys for uh a good long while now i've been in your presence uh, we'll get to that later both of you i have uh, gotten to hang out with yeah donna has owned a property up in washington state you all will be very familiar as we move into this uh listeners donna owned a property in washington state that was quite active with what we are assuming because she has witnessed it uh sasquatch activity and i have on with me mr david ellis of the olympic project he is an investigator for them researcher with them but he is also uh, maybe most importantly uh he's an audio guru that can pretty much take any piece of audio clean it up and Send it back to its owner, and the owner is blown away. I have heard this firsthand. I know, David, that a lot of people send you uh, clips and files. Uh, You've worked with other people besides Donna, but you have been working in tandem with Donna for years now. And I don't know which one of you guys wants to kind of do a more proper intro for yourself. You know, David, you, you too. But, you know, did I describe you well? And then, Donna, I would like you to take the reins, of course. And we are going to move through the entire story of your property in Washington State. Uh, David, did you want to jump in real quick and and fix my intro for you, if needs be? (laughs) Well, um, maybe not the guru. I I do have a very strong... Yeah, me too. (laughs) I do have a very strong interest in... uh, and audio and um, trying to figure out what it is that we are uh, hearing. Um, but I guess maybe I do it a little bit differently. I actually look at the audio visually and software that allows me to see a spectrogram, which gives me way more detail than just your typical wavelength up and down spikes, which is really just uh, loudness. That is how I go through uh, each and every audio clip through an analysis uh, situation. So I compare it to known a- animals. Uh, so anytime we hear, hear a record or a, a vocalization in the woods, um, I'm, I'm looking to compare it to knowns. I'm trying to discredit. Uh, and that was one of the things that really interested me about Donna and Greg in the first place is that they weren't out to prove it. They wanted to disprove it, which is really the way to go. So with that in mind, that all of all of these sounds that were recorded, we, we don't know what they are, but we have a strong suspicion. Does that help, Shannon? It does, but like Donna and I said, you are a guru. So you're just going to have to own that oh. title. Okay? <laughs> well, you're right. going to have to own that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so Donna, uh, you and your husband, Greg, you guys got this property, and I'm not going to keep rambling on. Uh, I want you to start wherever you want to start as far as, okay. you know, what you thought about this place, any initial impressions, and, and start from the beginning. Certainly. So my background has to do more with photography, but my photography has led me all over the place. I've been down in the Amazon. I've been in Southeast Asia and mainly in jungles and woods and so forth. Um, I've done work for Nat Geo. Um, and other magazines, you know, Wild Horses and things like that. 
So I'm not, I'm not unfamiliar with um, all types of wildlife and being out in the woods and being out in the woods by myself, uh, doing stuff in the jungles and, and so forth. So being out and away from people is not unusual for me, has not been unusual for me all my life. When Greg and I, my husband and I um, were looking at property, one of the things we were looking for was to be out there a little ways, but still be close enough because he still had to go travel quite a bit. He was traveling at that point. Um, probably 95 to 98 percent of the time he's only home uh, you know maybe on the weekends and some months only a couple of days of the month at that time but when we um, looked at the property the very first time we were just awestruck because when you're going up to the property um, you're actually going up the side of a hill and you're coming off onto a dirt road and it's lots of switchbacks and then you get up above and you can't see anybody you really can't hear anything, and you're looking out on this beautiful view of water and mountains, and it's it's really quite stunning. And there's no neighbors. There's like I think there's six neighbors on the I shouldn't say no neighbors. There's six neighbors on that whole um, side right there, and nobody could see each other, and you really couldn't hear anybody um, very rarely at that point. Um, we weren't quite to the very top, but almost there. Um, when we looked at the property and we decided to purchase it. It had actually been vacant for almost four years, pretty vacant. It was um, purchased by these other people as a second home, and they never went there. They, that's the reason they were selling it. Um, before that, they, it was owned by another couple, and they, were, they weren't there that long. They were the ones that actually helped build it and so forth. They built it, and then I, there was some type of trouble, and then they just didn't live there, and then they ended up selling it. So actually, that property had been vacant for a long time when we purchased it. Uh, and, you know, when we got there, it was kind of funny. My husband um, and I moved in on a Friday, and we moved in September, by the way. Uh, so on a Friday, my husband and I, they, he, we moved in, he dropped the truck off, unloaded it, and that Monday or that Sunday night, he was out flying again. So I was there by myself for the whole week. And what was interesting is that first week, you know, I was, remember talking to, talking to Greg on the phone and saying, there's, there's something here, because the dogs were acting funny. And keep in mind, we had lived on the side of mountains like Schweitzer Mountain in northern Idaho and all Wyoming. We've lived in Wyoming, Colorado. Um, we've lived out in the boondocks, per se. And these dogs are very familiar with all sorts of stuff. You know, one of the dogs had come across mountain lions, bears, deer. But there was something up there, and I assumed it was a bear or something or a mountain lion, where they'd act strange at times. They were not, you know, I have dogs that would go out and about and stuff, but they would not even, even go very far. They'd come right back. So at that point, that's that's what we noticed when we first moved there, that type of thing. So it's just that strange behavior. And then as we're going along um, and we're getting settled in, you know, Greg would be there and he'd say, "Are you? did you leave this door open to the garage? You know, things could get in. Um, the door, the garage was actually separate from the house. You'd come in to walk to the front door and we had like a courtyard, but the garage is, you know, like when you first walk in, I wish I could um, give you guys a uh, a map of that. But the door would be open. And I'd be like, no, I don't think so. And then sometimes I'd ask him. Just little things around the house were just off. Sometimes Greg would hear something. But, you know, we just kept going on. And, and keep in mind, this is not an everyday situation. It would be like once in a while here, once in a while there. It was just off. You know, something, something was off. And then, you know, the time's going on. It's September. And then December's coming. And it's cold that year. Very cold. We have um, frost on the on the grass and where it's real crunchy and we had ice all over and um, it was a weekend. It had to have been a weekend. Um, we were, Greg and I were going someplace and coming back and uh, we had our once a year uh, disagreement, I should say, where we were like not, not looking at each other. <laughs> so I was looking out my side uh, window. I was in the passenger seat. Um, we had a Toyota 4Runner. Um, a 2010. So if you want to look that up, you can see how the tinting on the windows is, which is kind of important. And he was looking straight ahead. And we were coming um, on the first uh, switch back on our way up the side of the hill to our place. Um, at that point right there, and keep in mind, there's potholes with ice in them, you know, the broken ice around it, and we're having to go slow. And then um, on either side, there's a stream that goes through under the road and out out, you know, farther out into the, to the sound area. But at that point, there's also a couple of still big trees, you know, it's winter time. So the big ferns, you know, are kind of died down a bit. 
you know, they're weighted down by all that frost and stuff. Um, and as I'm looking out the side door, not very happy with my husband, um, I see these legs. I mean, they're legs, but they're not exactly human. And as far as how far it was, um, David, that first tree was probably, what, 10 feet away? I'm thinking. Yeah, well, it, you know, it's a little bit deceiving. It could be as much as 15 or 20 feet, um, but it, it would yeah, be I don't think, more yeah, than that. Um, yeah, I don't it think, was, it, I, don't, I honestly, yeah, it was that first tree. I don't think it was very 50, 20 feet, but it was, it's right there. Yeah, it was right it there. Was, I mean, yep. and I asked David because he's much better at uh, at distance than I am. <laughs> but there's a little, little seat down, or just uh, slopes down a little bit. And what I saw was legs. And, you know, you have to understand we're driving by it. And then I'm looking at legs and I'm like, well, that's not right. You know, you're, you're thinking and it's in the, it's legs, but it's not like legs with no hair or legs with pants. It's legs with some fur. And I, I, my eyeballs go back down and then they come back up and yet yeah, legs. And then I'm seeing uh, the size and I'm getting a different viewpoint of the size and they're thick. I mean, we're not talking about a man size thing. We're talking about something much, much bigger. And as we're going by it and more, I'm seeing more things about it. When I'm going, I see the side view. And from the side view, I'm looking up and I can see what is what I would say a bubble butt, a bubble butt coming out. And then we're driving more and I'm going back up and down. I'm trying to process all of this. And keep in mind, this is, you know, we're going slow, but we're still driving by. I see the, I get excited about it. I can, because I can picture it in my mind. So I see um, it tapering in where the waist would be. And then flaring out where the chest would be, like a bodybuilder. And then I'm seeing these massive arms. And the arms, the way that it was standing, it was kind of tilted forward. But I've never been able to accomplish how it did it. And then by that time, I'm trying to look out the back window, which is just tinted enough that I can't see. And the reason I say that is because the timing I saw it was at that time between that day and night time. Um, where it's that dusk time where, you know, if you're inside the house and you're looking out, you're going to say it's, it's nighttime, there's no daylight. But if you're outside and your eyes are adjusted and stuff, there's still a little bit there. So just that little bit of tint in the back of the thing, I could not see the facial features or the full face of it. But before that, I could see muscle tone underneath, like the chest, you could just see it. But it, there was there was hair there. Just... And, I, and I'm just was dumbfounded and, and Greg's driving up and he's going and he knows something's wrong because I say, I'm, own, cause I'm saying no way, no way, no effing way. And if anybody knows me very well, they know I don't swear. And, and so Greg's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? He's starting to slow down. And I'm going, no, no, wait, go, go. Cause I didn't want him to slow down. Cause it's, it's just a shock for one thing. And you realize very quickly that if something like that wanted to get to you, it could, but I kept telling him to go, and he's like, he keeps slowing down, asking me what's going on. He thinks maybe something physically is wrong with me. And I didn't know how to say it, so I said, Bigfoot. And he's going to stop. I said, no, go. So he's still going. We're going along the switchback up to the house. He's asking me all these questions, and, and I'm telling him what I saw, and he wants to get the dogs and go back down and, and take a look. You know, I, I say Bigfoot, but it didn't sound right then because – Bigfoot to me is really commercialized. It's um, something you see toys of and all sorts of things. But this was a living, breathing thing. Um, it was built for business. It's very much what I saw was built for that terrain, which is deep ravines going up. There's no, there was no fat on this thing that I saw. Um, it was just huge. We went ahead and we went up. Greg got the dogs. And, of course, I wasn't staying in the car by myself. And came back out. And he wanted to roll down the windows to see if the dogs could smell something. And I was like, no, don't. I was, I was just freaking out. And um, we went back up to the house. Um, and what I did then was I called my sister. Of course, she doesn't, she didn't question me because I, I don't mess around with stuff like that. Um, and Greg went out. Um, my sister said something about, you know, going outside knocking wood or something because she, she was, um, I think she was into the shows. I don't know. We've never talked about it. But Greg did that. And what he heard on the, off the porch, off our decking, was something walking down um, the side of the house. Um, it could have been deer, it could have been anything, but it was that crunching sound of something walking on the grass on the way down. And that's the sighting that I had of it.
very, very close and just right down there. When you're, when you're going up to our house, it's really important to know that the ravine's going down. On these switchbacks, there is these deep, deep ravines. Very hard to get down into. If you're going to get down into them, um, a lot easier, of course, you know, trying to get down than it is coming back up. And the ravines all led to that point where I saw it. You know, David, you've been there and, and so forth. You, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everything leads there. Even and, and the thing about our house, too, is that our house had ravines on either side of it. So the ravine, even on our place, would lead down to the point where I saw it. And the fresh water that was coming out was actually coming out of the hillside down to the spot where I saw it. And and that's that's the type of stuff. Um, that's where I saw it. Anyways, there's a lot of seeing and sawing in there. But um, yeah, uh, there's a uh, that ravine is uh, where the uh, spring water comes. I, I believe. I exactly. Believe the, it is. Yeah. It is. So it is, um, and that would be a good reason for them to be there for fresh water. Fresh water, exactly. And, you know, after that, I didn't, you know, you're, you're looking at things, trying to explain all this, and you're going, I'm going on the internet, I'm trying to figure out this, of what I saw, and, you know, putting it, because, you know, this was not on my radar at all. On all the travels that I've done, all the times I've been out in the woods, this was not on my radar. Sasquatch was not on my radar. It wasn't something I thought about or anything. So going in there and trying to research this out, you're hearing stuff and you're reading stuff. You're thinking, oh, that's crazy stuff. That can't be it because this is this is some type of of, of being, some type of, of animal, human type of thing going on. So, you know, the first book I read probably wasn't the wisest book for me to read on it, but it was 411 Missing, which scared me even more. If you've not read that book, um, after you see, if you see one, don't read it. Because it's just, it's not the proper book to be reading. And you don't know where to turn to. And I was going online and I was, I was researching, you know, people to call and stuff like that. You know, just trying to find out more information. Because I, there, to me, there's, you can go on there and you can find stuff out. And you can find stuff out about TV shows and stuff like that. But like I said, Bigfoot seems too commercialized for what I saw. And you just don't know which way to go. So, you know, some more things are happening. Um, I finally got a hold of the another project. And I put a call into Derek and I didn't expect to get a, an answer from him, you know, him answering, but he did. And, um, you know, especially after I was having more things going on, like the doors opening, the dogs refusing to go outside, um, dogs being scared, the latch on our um, going into the garden, you know, the garden latches, the garden gate latches that lift up. This was a really thick one because the gate was built out of um, four by four. So those posts was the framework and one going down. So it needed a heavy duty latch to even hold it and to move it. That was pushed to open. It wasn't fumbled open, but pushed to open one time. And that, that thing, if you take a look at like a, my pink, it was thick as my pinky. I remember me um, measuring it. That was actually stretched. That bolt was stretched. It wasn't snapped. It wasn't anything else. It was stretched until it pulled out of that pocket. And at that point, you know, Derek came out and he took a look around, took a look at a footprint, I believe. Um, and I started having conversations with him. Um, and, and this has been going on now for about almost a year. Things would happen off and on, and I would get a hold of him, you know, just about different things, you know, like Bridget. She doesn't, she's not a barker. Bridget was a standard poodle. And Bridget, um, we had a side, side door. David, you'll know the one where it's off to the side where the laundry room was. You right. know, Bridget went out there one night. And I started letting them out where I could see them. They weren't go out at certain times of night. She went out there and just looked out into the darkness and barked and came right back in. Now, Bridget was 18 years old when she passed away a couple of years ago. So she was she was like 13 or something like that um, at that time, maybe 14. I can't remember. But, you know, she was an older dog and, and she would have nothing to do with it. So it finally came to a point when I was hearing things. I was hearing sounds. I was hearing something and I was hearing something that wasn't quite words, but it was coming from down below, from down below. Um, Cause we were, our house is built um, partly on the side of the hill. So when you walked in the front door, it was, it was like you're walking into a one story, but on the back side, you're actually, it's a second story. And then of course we had a second, a real second story above. When I started talking about sounds, when I started talking about, you know, it doesn't sound 
like words, but it kind of sounds like words. That's when Derek said, you need to talk to David. And it was almost a year after my sighting that David and I got together and started talking on the phone. One of the first things, you know, we were talking at least, what is it, about a month, David, before you came out? Yeah, I, I believe it was October that you and I started exchanging emails. And then right. it was about the middle of October, you had found a footprint on a trail and you really right. wanted me to come down to take a look at what what uh, you had found and where it was. Uh, because not only did you find a footprint, but uh, the next day you went back and there was a a, a wood structure, if you will. Exactly. Uh, over the trail that you had just been down and nobody else had been back in there. So, that so what was, happened that was, was is, yeah, that was it. Exactly. And so what happened was that we, I, that I went into that trail um, and that trail that where I found the footprint actually went along the ravine. Um, it was on top of the, the, the ridge and went down to a deep ravine, which is on the other side of the house. You know, it was clear on the other side. Um, actually, a separate piece of property, but nobody was ever going down in there. Nobody went into that area. Um, very much, almost, I would say, parked out because the trees are so big. You could walk all around underneath them. But we, I saw these footprints, and the weather was really damp, and I'd never cast a footprint before, and I didn't know how to do it. And I was talking to David, and he kind of told me how to do it, and I still did it wrong. I wasn't drying up. And what I did is I put a piece of, I found, like, the bark of a tree and I put that over with you know, some plastic and a wood on top of it, trying to keep the rain out is what I was trying to do and let it dry out a little bit so I could get that out of there. And then what happened was, is, you know, I had to wait, I think it was the next day at the most of the day after, cause I, oh, I wouldn't go in there by myself. I had to wait for somebody. I went in there and the trail that we had gone into and looking, you know, to, we were actually looking for chanterelles. That's how it started. We, uh, the trail that I was going into, which is, you know, off our property, was blocked. And when I say blocked, there is these trees, and, and David saw the trees, and we have pictures too, but these tree branches were not that big. And on top of that, those tree branches were not from any trees that were immediately around there. In other words, the branches did not fall from a tree around there and end up impaled into the dirt. They were brought in, and they made this structure almost like an X kind of, but there was multiple ones and it actually was in the exact spot where the trail was where I'd walked in, which is just mind blowing to me. Mm. And then when I um, went to go get past that and walk around and we went back to the thing where I cast that footprint, the stuff for the footprint where I cast it was still exactly where it was at. Nothing had been t touched that I knew of. I could tell, but there was another footprint right next to it that had not been there before. And looking at it, there is another footprint on this log type thing. You know, is a when I say log, it's more like the tree came down, the tree was rotting, and you know how the um, it branches out at the bottom. These great big fir trees or redwoods or whatever they're not redwoods, but the, the big trees. You could tell the footprint actually wrapped around the bottom of the tree, like when it was walking. Like you, you, there was some type of movement with that foot that you could see the toes embedded in there. It was crazy and phenomenal. But there was something had walked and one night, knowing that something where you had been had actually been there walking um, is, is, is kind of blows your mind. So we tried the best we could to, to do the, get the cast out of there. And um, that's when we called David and had him come out and begging him to come out. Because at that point, you know, I'm hearing voices. I'm seeing tracks. I've seen one. Things are happening around the house. Um, it's it's getting to be a little much and it's happening a little bit more frequently now than it had been at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, so, that's what was invited to, uh, to come down. I believe I came down on a Saturday. I'm not sure if it was the third or fourth week in October, but it was, uh, later in October and it was, uh, kind of mystical driving up to your property that the fog had set in and driving in and out of the fog, it gave a real eerie feeling <laughs> getting, getting to your house. I remember that. And then when I uh, pulled up, I had brought my gear with me uh, to do track casting. So I'm pulling all that stuff out. And I think Donna was a little bit taken aback at all the stuff that I had. <laughs> we, yeah, I mean, he, he had, uh, he had poles, 
you know, when you, when you, you've learned very fast, people that actually pay attention and do this scientifically, there are ways to do things. And I have learned a lot. I mean, you know, I think taking pictures of animals and, and, and doing things, you know, we pay attention to a lot of details and so forth, but the science part of it, you know, what David and, and the Olympic project and, and those guys are really in this, the science part, part of it is measurements and, and, and doing it correctly. So, that you can study it more. And that's what I loved about it. Yeah. And the, the, the cool thing about it was uh, I, I learned right away that Donna and Craig both weren't necessarily mm-hmm. uh, believing that there was Sasquatch activity that was happening. Uh, they were finding weird things and right. wondering if they were Sasquatch related. Uh, even the footprints, you know, uh, neither Donna nor Greg actually, I don't want to use the word believe, but they were skeptical and they, they wanted to point this out and ask, you know, am I missing something? Is this a double footprint from a bear? You know, bear, uh, yep, can you, exactly. Can you, yeah. Can you tell me more? Because I really don't want it to be a Bigfoot. And so that, that really impressed me because typically you come uh, across witnesses and they're, they're, they're trying to convince you that, that, that something Bigfoot happened, Bigfoot related happened mm-hmm. where Donna and Craig were not like that. They were, they were a little uh, skeptical. So I thought this was going to make a good fit because, you know, what we try to do is take evidence and then uh, disprove it and make, uh, make, you know, if it's a, a bare footprint, we, we go to all the links to make sure that that's what it is. So. Well, and that's, and that's the thing about it. I mean, you talk about a bear footprint can look very different just by the overlapping, but sounds can sound different. I mean, you know, think about how many sounds we make as humans, you know, from high screeches to low things. Um, right. Even the sounds, you know, David and I would discuss for hours or go back and <laughs> forth um, because, oh, you know, the, the animals make so many different types of sounds. And, and let's be honest, you know, what I saw to me was, for me, was traumatic um, because it was so close. And I, I um, when you think about, you know, you, you, if you've paid attention to news and orangutans and, and gorillas, you know, people that keep gorillas, um, there's been some gorilla attacks um, in the news. In fact, there's one not too long ago. You know, they're very, very strong creatures. Um, they're capable of ripping off um, doors off of cars and stuff like that. But if, if you take that and you extrapolate to what I saw, what I saw could easily get into anything it wanted. Um, and that's, that was my motor thought. And the other part of it is, is that here we are living out kind of in the middle of nowhere. I mean, we've lived out farther in places, but this still was kind of in the middle of nowhere going up. But, you know, this I, I wanted to feel comfortable going and walking around, and I just didn't. And you were by yourself most nearly entire, the entire time. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's what people have to understand. I was by myself with my dog. I did not work outside the house. Everything I did was was there. One thing I don't talk about too often is that at that time, um, I was in a flare. I have an autoimmune disease that they think was kicked off when I was doing stuff in the Amazon. But so I was dealing with that and I was home and I, you know, Greg was gone. Greg was gone, you know, like the month of August. I remember uh, seemed to always end up in that month. I would see him for two days out of the whole month and he would fly out. He might fly in on a Saturday, be there overnight and fly out on a Sunday. That was just part of his job. Yeah, so um, that Saturday that I first met you, you guys, we we talked a little bit before I said, let's go out and, you know, walk around a bit and see what we can find. And neither Greg nor Donna told me where to go. I I just had free reign. They said, well, just follow you around. You go look and and see and tell us what you uh, suspect that you might be noticing. So I did. I walked around the property. Uh, They had some of the uh, area fenced. And uh, I I started walking up the fence. And then I discovered in a little uh, bare spot what vaguely looked like maybe a, a footprint. And I thought that that was interesting. It wasn't anything to cast, but it had a, a few cues. Um, it looked like the, the outside edge of a foot was uh, was pretty prominent and maybe a hint of toes, but then it, it, it was compacted enough that uh, there wasn't any real deep impression. So it, it had my interest, 
uh, enough that I thought maybe I'll just keep walking this fence line and I'll find another one. So I did, I continued up. And then, then the first thing I noticed when we got close to the house was it looked like a fishbowl. All the windows on the uh, north northwest side of the house were exposed, no curtains. So well, yeah, we really night, didn't need yeah we really didn't need curtains because there's no neighbors. Yeah. So at night when you have light in there, the, you, you're you're a fish in a fishbowl. You anybody outside can see what's going on inside. Anybody inside cannot see what's going outside. So that gives something a distinct advantage right there. But anyway, as I'm walking up this fence line, I notice that one of the fencing material was pushed out. And uh, I went up to it and I looked. This is a six foot high fence, by the way. So it's not a, a short fence. It's, it's a very tall fence. And I, I looked and you had a direct line of sight into one of the, the west windows of that house. And come to find out, that's where Greg sat when he was home. So uh, it, it was interesting to me that just one of, of the fencing uh, had been pushed out and the rest of the fence was just fine. But so I pushed it back and come to find out uh, this, as the story progresses, a, a couple of weeks later, come back, that fence is pushed out again. So something wanted visibility into the house from an obscure position, which I thought was interesting. So we continue on our walk, and Donna is excited to take me to where that stick structure was and show me where she discovered the, the footprint on that trail. and. That, there there was, I believe, uh, you, you had invited your neighbors, didn't you, Donna? That we, we yeah, had. Uh, because yeah. So, yeah, I did, because um, what was interesting there is that on that property that they had, and it was, it's nothing that we even talked to anybody about because, you know, we don't, nobody, you know, when you're on that property, when you're on a dead end road like that, up in the, nobody really communicates too well unless there's something major going on because everybody likes their own privacy. But they had um, mentioned hearing noises or something. So that's what started that. Right. So um, they they came along. Uh, they were curious as to what I, I knew. They seemed to have some yep. interest, but it, it was more casual. Uh, it was more of a, 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 just a neighborly thing. I believe you had been mushroom picking with her. Is that is that correct, too? Yeah, Chantrell. Yeah, we were looking for the Chantrell. Right, right. So that was one of the reasons why you were out there in the first place. Um, exactly. Yeah. So we're, we we get to the location where the, the, the foot is, or the foot impression was that what Donna talked about, it stepping on part of the root, and it seemed to conform over the root in a, uh, you know, a C kind of fashion, uh, the letter C, if you will. And I thought, you know, I'd like to do a wood knock just to see what <laughs> if there is a, a response. Uh, I, I'm not much for one of doing any kind of vocalization. I have no idea what vocalizations mean, but a, a wood knock is, seems to be a little bit more stealthy, and I'm used to hearing those in other uh, witness locations. So I thought. Let's uh, let's see if we can get some interaction. Now, what Donna didn't know at that, and Greg didn't know at that time, is that I have had interactions before, wood knocking interactions back and forth. So that's kind of why I wanted to 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 try it just to see what would happen. So uh, I have this methodology. I don't carry two sticks with me or two rocks to bang or you know a rock and a and a piece of wood to to hit. I, I have this. Uh, <laughs> interesting methodology of clapping my hands in front of my mouth and forcing a jet of air into my mouth that sounds like a, a, a knock. So I did that, and it, I mean, immediately we got a response. And I think <laughs> I had everybody's attention at that point in time 
uh, everybody's eyes were about the size of saucers. Uh, nobody said a word. <laughs> I've seen you do well, that. It's it. impressive. <laughs> yeah, I know the mouth popped, but that knock that came back was not that far away. That's the problem. <laughs> right. It, it wasn't. Was it at, wasn't. It wasn't like a far away knock. It was fairly close. Right. It was at our between one one thirty. You know, in a, in a direction from where we were looking, and then I did it again. And it responded again, only this time it was about the four o'clock position. So it was on the move. And then unsolicited came a wood knock from the 12 o'clock position. So we were being successfully flanked. There was going to be something in front of us and something behind us. So well, and then um, the ravine is right there too. So it was it's basically not the one part of us was right next to the ravine down below, which would go down below. So it basically had it fanned out above above us on the same yeah, level, so, I should say. Yeah. So I looked at everybody and I said, we might want to mosey on out of here, <laughs> not knowing, you know, what can happen. I've not necessarily been buff charged before, but I have been growled at. My wife and I have been growled at. So we weren't sure, I wasn't sure, uh, and I didn't want to put anybody in a, any kind of a harmful situation. So I thought it was, it's time to exit. So we did. And, and we, we wandered around a bit uh, more in, in different, different places, never heard anything after that, but it was enough for me to say, I think it would be a good idea if we tried a recording study. And so at the end of the day, talked about it with Donna and Greg. I said, um, you know, it would be good if we could put a recorder out here and record all night. And Donna says, well, I'm not going outside. <laughs> so I said, I don't think you have to go very far. You can just leave the recorder on your deck. Your deck is outside and that's good enough. And she says, well, I think I can do that. Uh, because Exactly. You know, I mean, you know David, David's <laughs> original plan was to go down to buy the wood line, you know, down below a little bit. I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, <laughs> but we'll do, we'll do, I'll do the deck. I can walk out on the deck and hightail it back upstairs. She, she read the yeah. 411 and you're like, Hey Donna, just take a little yeah. track down uh, there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> down by the ravine. Take it down by the ravine. Yeah. What's a big oh. deal? Yeah. So but, yeah. actually we, we did uh, discuss it a little more at length because I had been working with witnesses, long time, long-term witnesses and I, I know the toll that this takes, and I knew that Donna and Greg did not know what the toll uh, it takes to do this, because if you think about it, I can make these suggestions and then get in my car and go home. Donna and Greg didn't have that luxury. They were home. And then so, you know, when something is of, of magnitude that you cannot figure out is happening at your home. That's a, that's a lot different than it happening to somebody else's home. So you can be a lot braver 300 miles away than you are right there. Mm -hmm. So I, I went I, over that link with Donna and I said, I'm going to leave it up to you guys if you, if you really want to pursue this. But th there, there could be a cost. So you, you have to tell me if you want to or not. And David was really good about that, and I appreciated that. But you know, I think Greg and I both have this. You know, we wanted we wanted to know. I wanted to know more. I wanted to research it more because I my I'm always of the opinion: the more you know, the less you ha you know. You're not afraid of it. It's that type of thing, and and finding out more about it because I didn't know anything about it at that point in time. Of course, I my my opinion at this point stage in my life and stuff was we still don't know that much about it because we really can't. We don't have a subject to study. You know, we have all these experiences and, and sounds and stuff, but there's still so much more, I'm sure. But when David left his recorder, you know, we went through all of that. He showed me how to set it up. And I don't think either one of us thought it would take on the life it has. How have we, David? How, how long we no. recorded for years. Right. Yeah. So, so my, my schedule is this. When the recorder, when David left the recorder, and David and I had talked about sounds even before that. I think that's um, my original, you know, when I question him about the, the, you know, me hearing something like a kind of language, not like a language. I talked to him about 
you know, I think this was before you came, David, but I had heard something, a sound, and he asked, like, he acted, you know, it was a funny sound, and, and I was trying to explain it, and I explained it like somebody's tapping on your belly, da, 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 um, which led to David sending me a clip of a, a gorilla chest beat, which was like, that's it. Uh, and I think we have those recordings, too, of that. Yes. But my, my, um, my night, my ritual was this, whether Greg was there or not, and keep in mind, he has gone most of the time. At dusk time or just before dusk, because I didn't like going outside at dusk, I would walk on my back deck. Um, the back deck was up higher because it's, it's obviously a deck off what would be the considered the first floor if you're walking from the front. But on the back side, it would be the, the height of the second floor because you're on the side of a of a hill. I put it out there. I'd turn it on. It'd be on the railing right there. And then I would go upstairs. Usually if Greg wasn't there, I was upstairs every night by the time it got dark on the very top floor. And that, so all the sounds that you're going to be hearing, that's where it was recorded from, that close to the house. It was not, you know, I didn't put it down in the woods. I didn't go anywhere near that part and record at all. So it's, when you start hearing some of the sounds and hearing how loud they are, because it's, it's, it's amazing what was actually caught right there. Um, and, and, you know, who knows what these sounds are. I mean, we're not saying what they are one way or the other. They're just really interesting. Now, we do have a lot of sounds that were recorded, but to put it into perspective, I mean, we've got uh, 12 hours a, a night, and Donna was doing yeah. it uh, maybe five or six nights a week that the, the recorder would go out for a couple of years. So we have thousands of hours of audio that was recorded, and we've only pulled out some of the more interesting stuff. There is. We do have quite a few more clips. I'd say we probably have in the neighborhood of what, 500 clips, Donna? Of, uh, oh my word, yeah, I've just clips that we've taken out. And you know, you say five or six six um, days a week. It became, um, it was a nightly thing. If we were gone for some reason, of course we wouldn't record it then, but it, it was a nightly thing, even with Greg there. Um, and, and to listen to that, when I first started doing this with David, I was falling asleep listening to this, trying to figure this out upstairs, by the way hearing sounds that went on maybe the night before or two nights before and sometimes being blown away and then realizing that that could be going outside right now. Um, and then David is so good about sharing um, how he does things and the reasoning behind it and his programs and stuff. So it got to be really cool because he and I would bounce back stuff and I didn't have to listen for hours and hours and fall asleep to that. Um, Cause David will explain to you way better than I can um, visually seeing the sounds and then going and taking a listen to it. Right. It, it, if I, well, to, to backtrack just a little bit, tell my side of a story of how I got interested in analyzing visually. I was doing sound analysis like Donna did for four or five years uh, until I just complained to my guru, who is uh, on the East Coast. He's a crypto linguist, uh, goes by the name of Monongahela in the uh, Bigfoot world. Anyway, he um, he says, well, you are looking at these, right? And I said, no, I'm listening to them. <laughs> what do you mean looking at them? And he said, no, 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 no. Uh, you're using a spectrogram tool to analyze your audio, right? And I said, no, what's a spectrogram? <laughs> he says, oh, we got to get you up to speed. So he did. He, he told me about a, a, a freeware software called sonic visualizer and what you do is you plug your audio into this uh sound analysis system and you have options of uh analyzing your audio and one of them is spectrogram which completely changes the visual of what you're looking at from a waveform which is just spikes to way more information comparison would be like looking at a fingerprint uh, it has that much information. And so you can uh, identify bird sounds. You can su identify all the common sounds visually without having to, to listen to it. To, so you, would, you get to the point where you can really uh, fly through your audio. You're not looking at every little uh, large spike. As a matter of fact, most of the things fall under the radar because People are looking for larger spikes. They're, they're looking at it in a waveform. 
and they're missing a ton. So I, I utilize that form of this, the spectrographic analysis to get a good idea of what it was, you know, that, that Donna was recording. So we had, oh gosh, thousands of hours to, to review. So you needed to have a, a, a tool that would like, allow you to go through it much, much quicker. And uh, that, that tool was uh, Sonic Visualizer. Yeah. Should we, pl- should we play some of those now? Uh, do we do we want to do that, or uh, do we want to tell some of the other things that happened um, before we get into the audio, like the peanut butter jar? Oh yes, infamous peanut butter jar. <laughs> I say infamous because it blew me away because I was not expecting anything to happen. Now, now David started talking. I did not tell Don to put, put out food. Um, as, <laughs> if she would have no. asked, I would have said, don't do it. <laughs> like, don't <laughs> feed the bears. <laughs> well, well, what's interesting is David started talking about gifting. You know how gifting to me is like, oh, food's great. Give me a cake or whatever. But um, <laughs> I really like those fruit bouquets, by the way. But, uh, you know, so when when David was talking about it and he's telling me that the like, you don't feel pressured to do it. But, you know, this is this has happened, you know, this place or this place or something like that would be interesting to see. And I'm like, OK, so, you know, and the, the conversation went back and forth and and, you know, I mulled it over and, you know, David didn't bring it up again. So one night I was out there and I had this peanut butter and I went down um, below. And one of the things to know is that when uh, at the very beginning, eh, all the trees and everything was very close to the house and it made me feel very uncomfortable um if anybody knows what olympic uh rainforest looks like you know how dense that is so we cleared quite a bit at least away from the house i mean the property still had tons on it but we i I wanted more of a free zone where i could see um and and something not sneak up so close i was not feeling comfortable um so what i did we we cleared some things out and i felt more comfortable going down below um certain times today even without greg there so there was a bench down there. We had a little tiny burn pile um, where we'd burn brush and stuff like that. And it, there was a bench there. And, the, and we had dogs, Layla and Bridget. And I went down there and I put, and I stacked rocks, like three rocks, and and put some peanut butter there. And I think, I can't remember if there's two stacks. No, there's three rocks stacked on top there of each other stacks. and peanut butter. Two, two stacks. stacks. That's what I was rocks. wondering. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. I yeah, exactly. Two, um, two we have pictures. We have pictures of it. Two stacks Go of ahead. three. Yeah, two, two stacks, stacks three. of three rocks and then a, a jar of peanut butter, all right. lined up uh, on this picnic bench. The so picnic bench, and and then I put it out there. Now, keep in mind, you put it out there, and never in a million years did I think anything would happen. I mean, I, I really, you're still, you know, I I know what I saw. You know, I'm hearing the sounds, but you're still thinking in your mind, is this this is not supposed to be happening so we the next day i went back down there and the peanut butter jar was gone and it was three stacks two stacks or three stacks of rocks there was two rocks on the second stack and the top rock and keep in mind these are are, are balanced on each other the top rock was taken off and placed exactly where the peanut butter jar was that that blows my mind i mean you really you have to think about it you have to take that rock and not disturb the other ones. And it would have been very easily to, you know, wiggle the bench and, and everything tumble over because they were kind of, you know, balanced on there and taken and placed exactly where, not to the left, not to the right, but the exact point of where that peanut butter jar was. Blown away. That's, uh, it just blows me away. It, it's like the, the thought process was, process was they'll never know it's gone. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, you know, you just don't expect it. And, and the other thing I started seeing was uh, blue tiles, pieces of blue tiles popping up in different places, but places where I'd walk. Like uh, one time there was a, a blue tile put on, um, we talked about, they, we talked about that gate that was pushed open and the four by fours that, you know, that connected to a fence line. You know, we eventually built a fence, uh, a, like a small perimeter fence, not throughout the whole property, just this one little section. But a blue tile sitting on top of it, a broken blue tile. Where did this blue tile come from? We didn't have any blue tile anywhere on the property. Um, I'd find it in the pathway. 
I mean, we just arbitrarily pop up in different places, but always like where I'd be walking, you know, walking around with the dogs or something like that, but placed in a spot where I would, I would notice it. It might even be on the ground, yeah. but it's, uh, it wouldn't be there the day before, but then it would be there the next day. I had it where it wasn't there one time earlier in the day and it was there uh, later in the day, which kind of blows your mind because it's like, okay, something was here, you know, and then the, and then you think about, could it have been a bird that dropped it or a crow that brought it in? But it's just, you know, big enough where you wonder how it would manage it. And it was just, it was, the whole thing was, it's just dumbfounding. <laughs> you just don't know. It, 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 it kept you on your your toes. It would always seem to strike when your guard was down just a little bit and then boom. It was. And it was uh, interesting the, too. Go ahead. Yeah. The one thing that I found interesting, and we have pictures of this, Donna put a, I think it was a Pez dispenser that was in a, in a yep. plastic case and something else. What, what was, or was it just it was a rock? Dispenser? It was a rock that, yeah, it was a round rock oh. about the size of a fist and it had the word love on it or something like that. I had been messing around, yeah. you know, RC crafting. Yeah. So you took it, it was uh, on the edge of the woods, no, uh, right near what looked like a animal trail. Mm-hmm. you know that they could be using but it was definitely an animal trail and, and you left it there and well, i left it on the branch of a yeah a, a, on the branch of a madrona tree right there by the trail and we have madrona trees now madrona trees are a lot um a hard tree by the way which will make a difference when we start listening to knocks but it was yep. it was it was balanced on like a like the wide part of a lower hanging branch that and then the and the Pez dispenser was right there, the rock and that together. So what blew me away was when Donna came back the next day to take a look at it, it was on a, the rock and the Pez dispenser were on a fence post with the rock holding the Pez dispenser down. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and the, the Pez dispenser was kind of crooked, cockeyed, so it was like, you know, mm. Not quite yeah. perfect, but it was, it was, yeah. Yeah. That, like, I couldn't quite figure out how to make it balanced. So, I'll we'll just put the damn rock on it. That'll hold it. Jeez. Well, See, I, and again, the thought and, process, like you were talking about, Donna, right? The thought process behind oh, yeah. that. And before that, you know, before we put that little fence down there, which, you know, when David talks about that, that little animal trail, it, it, there was a natural clearing right there before we put that fence there, because I, I felt like we needed, I needed some type of separation there because. I would go down there in like, you know, early afternoon, you know, if Greg wasn't around and then I'd be up and I wouldn't go down in that area for a long, you know, cause I'd, I'd go with the walk with the dogs and stuff. I wouldn't go off property with the dogs. I just didn't feel comfortable, but down in that little area, um, we eventually got a couple of goats. They'd follow you around like dogs down in that little area. But uh, one day I was, I went down there, I had a hat on and I don't usually wear hats and I got a, and it was like two o'clock in the afternoon. And I went down there and I went to got close to that wooded line. And all of a sudden from the, it was very higher up this branch. It was like a crack, like something broke a branch and slammed it down through the tree. And it shocked me. And the, all the animals all of a sudden crowded around me. And I was coming back up as fast as I could. And I was tearing my hat off because I'm thinking, okay, trying to think, you know, this has been going on for a while, tearing my hat off. And I was, and I automatically yelled at it. You're not supposed to be here yet. And everything went silent. It was like so silent. And at that point in time, I just stood there. And I believe I called David. Um, yeah, you I, did. I just don't know what to, I did. Uh, cause I didn't know what to do. And I just stood there silently and everything, all the, it's funny cause the dog, the, the dogs, the two goats were just silently there too. They didn't move. And then all of a sudden I saw this, it couldn't, it, cause it's so dense there, but something that went straight, very smooth but straight kind of across that path he's talking about, but I couldn't quite see it because um, it was deeper in just, and it was dark, but it went smooth straight across. It was, looked large. It was, it was, it, I don't know how to describe it because it did, but there was no up and down movement, but just straight across um, very briefly. Cause the, cause you couldn't really see in there cause it was so dense. But when that thing came down from the branches down, it was very close because I mean, it's, it's hard to explain unless you've been into the Olympic forest or some type of rainforest, how somebody could be feet away from you and you not see them, you know, six feet away or, or, you know, just a few feet into the, to that wood line, you could stand there and nobody would see you. That's how dense this area was. 
So you just never knew what was around. And so that's why we built that fence, because I did not feel comfortable. Well, I think that's something really important to drive home to everybody. If they're not picking up on this, I'm sure they are. But they were obviously always, nearly always, maybe always is a strong word, but nearly always watching you. They they knew your schedule. They they seem to enjoy your schedule. And so what we're thinking is, guys, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but with this hat incident, it upset someone or something, right, uh, whatever they are, it upset them. Like maybe they, they didn't recognize you or they just, they didn't like that, the hat yeah. in particular. You know, what what is the deal with that? Yeah, that's, that's my, kind of my thought process is that they yeah, didn't, that's something that I didn't wear. Go ahead. Right. Yeah, it's one or the other, um, but they're both good assumption starting points. Because other people have mentioned that happening before. I've heard of ladies wearing baseball caps and have had strange things happen, you know, odd sounds uh, uh, to you know, stun them or stop them from whatever it is they're doing. And if they take their hat off, it, it seems to be more of a calming scenario. So, I don't know. know that. And know. Yeah. By the way, that was a baseball hat I had on. Yeah. No, yep. but, but yeah, it's I something it, I just never wear. The only other thing I can think of is uh, a hunting cap. <laughs> so, mm. you know, I never thought we about think that. Of it as a cap, they might think of it as a hunting cap. Yeah. Again, wild ass speculation. I'm just throwing right. it out there. And, and keep in mind, you know, I'm not the only one that experienced things either. You know, we talked about a uh, uh, window, you know, the back of the windows, how they were fish holes. Uh, we had a uh, wood stove um, kind of by the window, and but you'd walk by it um, if you're going, I'm not sure how to explain it, to going across to maybe to the sliders or down the hallway or something. But, and this was not a small house. It was, you know, a fairly large house. But, you know, I went one of the, one night, I put something in the, the wood stove and I was standing there by the wood stove and kind of by the window, the back window, um, when we had things lit up, Greg was home. And I walked by and then Greg had been standing there too. And he walked by about a minute later. And as Greg walked by, there was a stick that was thrown at the window, a rather large stick that we found the next day. Uh, but it hit right below the window, directly below it. So, I mean, there was, there was odd things that happened, you know, for Greg as well. You know, one time uh, Greg was sitting in his chair by this other window and he, he would sit there night after night. And, and keep in mind, you know, we don't have shades on our windows. You know, there's uh, we had talked about getting shades after all of this, but we never did. It's just there's no need. There's no neighbors. There's no nothing, even though all this is going on. Um, and also, I'd go upstairs and I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't go be on the downstairs part because of what was going on. But Greg was sitting downstairs. He was by a window. He was must have been doing work. That's what he, that's what he does. But all of a sudden, we heard this, he, and we both heard it. I was upstairs at the time, but it sounded like this massive dragging, very loud, very very fast, coming up from down, kind of below, up past Greg. And Greg was right there, and we couldn't figure out what this was. And it took it took a little bit of um, going back and forth, even with David, talking about what it could be because it was it was just so loud and so draggy. And we finally found out what it was. It was something, a stick that was um, pushed against the fence and something must have ran up, dragging that stick up and down, you know, that's like a, like dragging yeah. a stick along the fence line, right past Greg, right outside the window. It was nuts. But it, and then we never could, we never could make it go as fast as he did, as fast as the sound was. So, I mean, Greg had his Greg had his instances too. It was it was not just one sided, just for me. <laughs> but one of the things that um, and and I'll um, why my personal thought process on something, and I and we never you know all these sounds and stuff. You know, there's obviously there's something there. Of what it is that people are going to have to decide. But when David talked about these knocks and so forth, you know. Once we were clued into them, you'd start, I'd start paying attention to them more. One day I was out and I was raking leaves, so it had to been the fall time. And we had cut down a couple of the trees that were closer, so there was a stump. I was raking and I heard a knock. At that time, when I, when I heard the knock and I realized what was going on, I'd heard two. I'll, I took my, rake, uh, my handle of my rake and I hit it against the stump. And it sounded a lot louder than I meant it to. 
and then all of a sudden I heard the knock where the first one knocked off was if I was if you're standing and looking at 12 o'clock it would be at your 11 o'clock but well I just put it this way if I was standing towards the other ridge line it would be at my 11 o'clock and then the knock happened another knock happened about my two o'clock and then I hit that knock that I was talking about when I tried the rake and then what happened next was when I hit the one o'clock the two o'clock and then all of a sudden there was a five o'clock one at five o'clock that hit and then I hit the the sound and keep in mind there was like a little bit of space of time like a knock knock and then my knock and then the repeat and, and where they hit that, that five o'clock one. And then I knocked, you know, hit my rake again type of thing on the stump. Nothing uh, at all after that. And it was kind of, to me, it was like, whoa. You know, it was like at this very moment, from what I'm thinking in my mind, there's three of them at different points. And, and it's interesting to note, there's one at the upper ridge, kind of like the lower ridge, and then over on the other side of another ridge of these ravines. So there's, there's, they're actually covering um, down where everybody would be coming in up off the, the road area, if that's what they were trying to do. And into the more depth woods up above, because above us went into, is that uh, BLM land, David? I can't remember what kind of land it is, but it's all miles and miles of woods up there and, and, and off track roadways. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, there's a power line cut way up there. And, power line, that's uh, it. Yeah, and a, a lot of clear cuts uh, up above. Clear cuts, working forest land, I guess. I guess it would be called. But what was interesting is that night um, when I was, Greg was not there. When I was upstairs in the corner, a corner bedroom closest to um, the garage, uh, there was a. I was talking to Greg on the computer, and you know we had there's no there's no wireless there when you're out in the country. You're plugged in, so we had a, a you know a desktop computer and talking to Greg and, and so forth. On the side of that, that night, on the side of the house, something was banging on the side of the house. And so that night, and, and Greg's like, go look. And I'm too scared to go look because I'm right there. It would have been, look. you know, you could tell there, there, there could be a, a light. They would have been able to tell there was a light there. And that's probably where I was at. So I didn't have any other lights that I was aware of. I can't remember now the rest of the top story. But the banging on the, on the, on the, on the house. It was, it was, um, David called it drumming. I call it banging, but you know, there's always any time that something happens. I mean, th there's like a response to what happened earlier in my mind. So there's banging on the house even. So all of this goes on and, uh, you, you really, when you are there by yourself, you just never know. Well, and just to drive this home, and this is something that David alluded to, and I've said it many times when it comes to lots of different kinds of activity, even other than Bigfoot, is that when you don't have the option to leave, like you're not going somewhere and, and investigating and leaving, that is a whole other situation. And, you know, just to drive home again, just how impactful this was on you, Donna, because you're talking about you're in your own house, and once it got dark and Greg's not home, you wouldn't go back downstairs. That's horrible. No. Nope. I'd make sure the dogs were all, all you know, they had their potty breaks and so forth. And, you know, even, you know, we talked about something that I saw earlier. The third time I thought I saw something, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you this instance. Greg left very early for the um, airport. Um, when he left, we had this little courtyard, and it was really early in the morning. And he left and all of a sudden the dogs decided they had to go to the bathroom. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, you have to take him out. I mean, what are you going to do? But they ended up going potty on the sidewalk. You know, we had a little um, walkway up to the house on the side. You've, you've been there, Shannon, too. You know what I'm talking about. They would potty there and there was a motion light light there. And that motion light is yellow. So when I came back in and I ran back upstairs and I was going across, there's an upstairs alcove type window. And I'm going to the bed um, there. I glanced out. And I don't know why, maybe I, my mind saw some movement, but I actually saw part of one peeking over the fence where I had just been and we had just let the dogs out. And it was very brief. Um, I very briefly saw it because the first thing I did was dive under the covers and call Greg. I did not want to see it again. I mean, people say, oh, I wish I could see one. I wish I could see one. And that's great. But if it's from a distance, that's one thing. When it's right there and you've seen one so close and you've seen them on their property, 
Um, I know there's lots of people out there that think that's, that's awesome. And for them, it might be, but for me, I, I'm one of those people that need to know more. And I, and I'm very much aware of animals, um, whether they feel like, you know, you're trapping them or whatever and how they can be. I just, I needed to know more. I need, I don't like that, that I don't like to be scared and that type of stuff. I'm not into horror films or anything like that, but uh, not that I'm saying that this is a horror film, but what I'm saying is, is I, um, you know, I, I, at this stage in the game, if it was way off, that would be fine. If I saw one, if there's any type of close, I don't want to see it because I can imagine how fast they can go. But these, these things are, they're big, they're huge. And even what I saw in that brief moment, what I saw was the light reflecting off his forehead type of, type of area, which was reflecting off of it, kind of like a greasy. Um, I don't know how to explain it, uh, but peeking over, you realize you just never know. You never know. And obviously, we were in some place where I think that they had kind of made their home for quite a while. That's my opinion. So I don't know. I think there, I think there's travel patterns in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Except unfortunately they never traveled far from you, uh, which was part of the problem there. Right. Well, you know, it's interesting after, you know, when, when uh, we were recording and stuff, there'd be times of span uh, timeframes where we were not hear anything. And then all of a sudden, there'd be lots of activity. And correct me if I'm wrong, David, but it seemed to be almost like in a two-week span. And yeah. then just as soon as we, just as soon as we think we'd have it figured out and expect something, they would mix it up. But there was always a, there was a pattern. Right. They didn't. Uh, they weren't always there, or, or whatever was creating this activity wasn't always there. Uh, you, you'd have stretches, you know, maybe two, three weeks where you know zip. But, uh, even if uh, even if Greg came home, boy, how, would, would uh, that ever mix it up? We tried to do that. We tried to do that at times, and we really couldn't make a connection. However, uh, there was one thing that I did catch, and I could hear Greg's car. I got to know what it sounded like. I could hear his car coming mm-hmm. up the, the driveway, and there was a wood knock. So. Not mm-hmm. just a lone wood knock, but several wood knocks. And then when Greg got home, there was a, a, a knock, and then it went quiet. Wow! So it and then like, the opposite would be true. When he left, the same thing would yes. happen. Yeah. So when he left the property, you'd get you get a wood knock of, of him leaving. Right. So something seemed to be keeping track of comings and goings. This kind of blows your mind, doesn't it? <laughs> it did mine. Okay, now, yeah. uh, now this is... I, I, I can tell you from experience in other areas that I have worked, there was one particular location where there was a locked gate. We parked the car, and when we get out, if, if something was around, they would announce their presence, you know, or announce our presence. You could take it either way. Um, and then when we would leave, it would, uh, again, knock. <laughs> one time, not to get take away from Donna's story, but there was one time my wife was with me at a location, and I told her, uh, you know, they could, uh, would knock when I uh, start the car, just before I start the car. If you go over there by that stump and just sit and wait, you might hear a wood knock. And she, <laughs> she looked like, she looked at me like I had just fallen off the turnip truck. <laughs> so, no, she wasn't going to do that. But um, what happened was when I did go to start the car, we heard a huge scream that was just on the other side of the road. And I can remember the look on my wife's face <laughs> when that happened. Oh, my word. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't I wouldn't say they're on the stump either, David. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny you mentioned the gate because our, we had a gate going into our place you know, from the road for uh, finally, I just gave up and, and just, we, we made it stay closed, but we used to close the gate, but then something would open it and then we'd keep it open and something would close it. It was the most bizarre thing. Not and, only did they open and close it, but they marked it. If you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, exactly. I was just going to say that we have, I have pictures of it. <laughs> now, if you, if you are, um, if you are a farmer or uh, have any type of animals, you know what a, um, a, a gate, one of the big green gates that you have that go into like a pasture or field. That's the type of gate that was on there. 
So you know how high that, those gates are. You know, you, you know, figure you're hanging it up, so it's up a little bit. Something, um, which would be on the side of the house when we were coming home, something actually, um, it looked like water, uh, pee, pee, but <laughs> not the top part of the thing, but the second one down, and it hit all the railings going straight down. There was no overspray to the other side. There was no spray to the side. It was like it straight down it, it potted straight down. It was just, and like I said, no overspray. So there was no angle to it, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, just, let, let just, that height, height measurement sink in. Exactly. And, and it had to, have, yeah, and it had to have just happened because it was wet. And then mm. when I went to go, when I was, went to go, I took a couple of pictures because as I was opening the gate, I was like, oh my goodness, like, so look, as I was opening the gate. And then when I went back out to take some, it was already dried up. So it had to have just happen. I mean, that's just it. You think, oh, this is just happening. And what did that? Because you have to be at a certain height. Yeah. It, most humans, uh, males, would have to go up or be up <laughs> to make this happen. So this was, this was all a downward scenario. Yeah. So something very tall. Exactly. Very tall. It, it's just those weird neighbors standing on very tall stools. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, of course, you know. <laughs> they ran right back off in the woods, man. <laughs> Those there neighbors, they, they really had a lot of stamina for, you know, keeping us up for years. <laughs> yeah, Keep yeah, mind, exactly. We're recording, we're, we're about four or five years, we're recording every single night. It was, it's kind of gotten up. This is complete speculation, uh, but it's something that I've thought about with your goings on there. What do you guys think would have happened if curtains had been put up in that house? Uh, there, there may have been more house slapping uh, than there was already. I, I think pure speculation on my part that they would have tried to provoke because it's pure entertainment if you think about it. It's like turning the TV set off or not getting reception. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think you're right. You know, I never thought about that. That's a good question. I just, you know, I, I do know this is that, you know, upstairs, you know, when you're up there and you're changing and stuff like that, I used to change, you know, not think about it twice. Um, you know, just change, you know, you get naked, change your clothes. You know, there came to a point where I wasn't doing that. I just didn't feel <laughs> I was like, they don't Whatever is out there doesn't need to see me, and and I'm I'm, and I would change in our little closet or away oh from the window. Oh my goodness! That's you know, and it's funny. Somebody asked me that too. One of, one of the people that were visiting there, in fact, I know who it was, asked me if I ever did that. I'm like in the beginning, but not after that. That was one of his questions. Yeah, because after the hat mm-hmm. incident, you know they they don't like things changed up. You know, you were definitely like David said, their entertainment. Uh, unfortunately Almost. so yeah i always just thought man i wonder if the curtains went up but i bet you david's exactly spot on, on that too like they would have it would have ramped up as they say in sasquatch talk right i think so i think that you know when, just like with a child that you know children like to have things a certain way and once that that sometimes deviates you know you get your little temper tantrums um or they're not you know, I think there, there's a routine that they that they have themselves and that they probably expect to see in others. In my opinion, I don't know. Yeah, something 800 to 1,000 pounds. You don't quite want to imagine it having a really bad tantrum. No, exactly. Yeah. We, we um, speculated, gosh, early on that there might be some obsessive, compulsive behavior mm-hmm. going on. That, you know, certain things had to be just so, and if they were moved or uh, put in different positions, they would move them back. Um, so if, yep. when I say they, so, yeah. Something. Yeah, I don't think, you yeah, know, something. You know, and all the sounds that you're, I think we're going to start playing, uh, all the sounds, you know, unless I physically saw it, you know, these are, and David says speculations. We can speculate what it is, or, or we can try and figure out what it is or what it's not. Um, it's not this, it's not this, it's not this. But I know what I saw, which would then be my experience or something that happened to me. Um, but I never physically saw one utter anything, you know, make a sound or anything. Me, set myself personally, I've, I've heard reports of other people. So when we play these sounds, it's all speculation on we believe 
it's something or it's not these things, so it's something else. And you, you'll yeah. have to make up your own mind. Right. And Donna, because it's on the list of audio, I, I see here in our outline that I have in front of me something uh, maybe you wanted to talk about before we head into these sounds is a horn sound and what happened after that. Yes, we were, I was hearing these, and one of the things is we were hearing dogs barking, and I guess we can get into the, get into it now. Some of the dog barkings were not registering quite like dogs. They were registering different. When you take a look at things visually, um, what we hear and what we see sometimes are different. So on that horn sound, there was a bunch of, you know, that fence line that we talked about where David talked about it being pushed out. Periodically, that would get pushed out, and I'd put it in. And we even tried to nail it in more. And, you know, when we say pushed out, we're talking about uh, a post or a little, at one time it was a post, but um, a little piece of the you know, when you do a, what is it, a two by two by one or four by one, you know, the little slap getting pushed out from the, from the fence line, those would get pushed out. And it's always seemed like the same one or two to take a look. So on that area, um, during the day, I was hearing um, dogs barking and so forth. And my dogs went out on a deck and there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on and couldn't figure out what it was, what exactly was happening. All of a sudden, and you can feel it in the depths of, I could feel it in my chest. There was this sound that happened, mega sound, and, and David said they, they, it's been recorded in other places. I've heard other ones now, and they call it the horn sound. And the blast of that, you actually felt it through your body. I don't know how else to explain it. Do you, David? No, it, it will become apparent when we play the vocal right. uh, clip. So, how, how loud that was, and uh, you might want to say how close you were to it. Yeah, that was pretty close. That was like, oh my word, how far? How far is that? I was on the on that one say, edge of. The, I would say fifty feet or less. Is your, yeah, your, it was uh, it was very close. Yeah. and the dogs are there, and they when I, you can you if I'm not sure if the whole recording's there, but where you slam where I went in and I slammed the door shut, and I I yell for dogs. You know, the dogs just went silent. I'm like Bridget, like that, my dog Bridget, because I'm deciding whether I need to go find the shotgun or not, because it was so close and so loud, and everything went silent afterwards. You just don't know what is going on. It's just, you know, it's an eerie quiet that it's like, you don't know what's happening. It's, it's, yeah, I, you should play that because that, that, if you can imagine being outside and being that close to that sound and that sound reverberating through your body, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's, it gets you. David, uh, before I hit this button here, can you preface this by letting everyone know, talk about the enhancements that you do, and then the fact that most every single one of these that we are going to play are looped? Right. Um, let's start with the looping. I have found that when I play an audio clip for somebody, the first thing out of their mouths after the clip is, could you play that again? So I went through a process of figuring out that usually it takes about, you have to hear the, the sound three times before you get a good feel for what it is that you're hearing. And by the fourth and fifth time, you're, you're really locked in and have a good feel for, for the sound. Now, most of the sounds are a five-time loop, but some of the audio was so long that I've only uh, looped it twice. But you, I just found that by repeating the uh, the sounds, you get a, a better feel for the, the scenario. The second thing is that you alluded is that all of the uh, audio has been edited, and I edit in a spectrogram, so which allows me to find the sound of interest and enhance it, and then downplay the surrounding sounds. So you can really, really hone in on what you are hearing. So, yes, they have been, man, been manipulated, but uh, not to the degree that it changes what you are hearing. So it, it is uh, a bit of an artistic flair that I, I have found that works for me. I have been able to enhance audio that was really, really distant and faint and bring it forward to the point where you can, it sounded like, you know, it was right next to you when it went off. 
So it's just it's, it's something that I do. And like you say, we need to be upfront, uh, let people know so that if anybody looks at it, they go, oh, this has been manipulated. Well, well and keep been, and keep in mind when uh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm going to say you said something where it sounds like it's right next to you. You can very clearly tell in, in my mind, maybe it's just because I know these sounds. When you say it's right, like it's right next to you, you bring it up forward so you can hear it better. I think you can tell because of the, you can you are still hearing some of the background sound a little bit right. that it's still far away. It's not like this horn sound was very you'll be able to tell how close it was. Some of it, we have yep. a yell that is, is in the distance, but uh, David's enhanced it so we can hear it better, just making it a little bit louder. You can tell that's far away. So it's not like, oh, well, it's going to sound like I'm it's right next to me on all of them. That's not, I don't think that's what he meant. I just wanted to clarify that. Did you need to uh, finish up your thought, David, or? Uh... Oh, no, we're, we're good to go. If you want to play the okay. horn vocal, I just, um, I guess I should mention that how I knew this was a, what was a horn vocal vocalization was I had recorded it the same identical sound in 2007, about seven or eight years prior to Donna recording it in a, 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 a location that I've been working with another witness. I sent the uh, audio to my guru that I told you that I work with is Monongahela. And I said, I don't know what this is, but this is really strange. And he says, oh, yeah, I know what that is. That's that's the horn vocal. And I went, the horn vocal? What the heck is a horn vocal? He said, well, it's something that myself and other folks here on the East Coast have been recording for years. We don't we don't know exactly what it is, but we have our suspicion. So we have it here on the West Coast, too. <laughs> sure Whatever do. Whatever this thing is. Well, let me preface this by saying, if you guys are listening to this on a speakerphone, uh, mind your dogs, because uh, some of these may uh, get them going a little bit. We've heard of that before when it comes to playing some of these sounds on podcasts, right? So, all right. So, here we go, guys. Uh, horn vocal. Again, remember, these. most of these are looped. If that's not power, I don't know what is. Uh, you could just, <laughs> yeah. When I was loading up these sounds, I've got my headphones on. I've got the volume up just to, you know, holy smokes. <laughs> that one is one of my fav- personal favorites just because you can you can imagine the, whatever it is, attached to that sound. It's got to be big. Well, and it's interesting. You you talked about the you talked about the the dogs. You know, people. You know, keep talking to your dogs. When when David sent that back to me, looped like that, I was outside, and I had had my phone. You know, I had my phone with me, and he sent it back, and I went to play it on speaker, and I was out off to the side of the house, but down below. So um, behind me was the sliding glass door type stuff, in the front I'd have to go up towards the uh, towards the um, gate a little bit and back around to the front door when David sent that to me and I turned it on all of a sudden and I'm and, and you know played the first time second time all of a sudden from across the, the dirt road on the other side of past the gate I'm hearing um, something rush at me through the trees like a truck meg truck coming at me and <laughs> I'm trying to turn it off the dogs are running for the front door, I'm, I'm thinking I need to go to the back door, but you know, you're worried about your dog too. I didn't know what to do. And I'm literally, I mean, this thing is crashing, something's crashing through trees and stuff coming straight at me. And I'm like, I'm trying to turn it off and I'm yelling, you know, for the dogs and stuff. And it's me, it's, you know, I'm yelling. I think it's finally that thing stopped, whatever was coming towards me from my yelling. And I, I, I got into the house and, and of course went upstairs and called David. <laughs> But that, <laughs> that was the reaction I got from playing that. Because he does, he plays it, and I'm, I'm trying to fumble with my hands, trying yeah. to do all this stuff, and I'm and, and, and kind of a little freaked out because something, something is bluff charging me or charging me. I don't even sure if it was a bluff. After so that, you're, at me. you're like, okay, play David's very, very well-enhanced audio inside from now on. Exactly. <laughs> Make note. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're like, okay, I mean, lesson learned. 
And don't go out to an area where you think there's activity and play that either, because you never know what's going to happen. We don't know what it means. Yeah, yeah. you can ask yeah. a, 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 you can ask Derek about trying to call blast something and how that works out. Oh, I heard that. Yeah. Yeah, like babies <laughs> crying, maybe. You know, none of that's a, a very good idea. Yeah, I tell people yeah. uh, if you're going to play this out in the uh, outdoors, uh, have an escape plan. Be ready. Yeah, exactly. That's why Derek's that story is, is so uh, so puckering. <laughs> he didn't quite have an escape plan <laughs> when he's six miles deep in the in the bush, right? <laughs> Um, no, and it was right there. Right there, yeah. And it was the exact same thing that you described, right? Like this this charging, like you can't see it, but you know it's like you said, like it it sounded like a Mack truck coming through the woods at you. I, I can't imagine. I, I don't, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, a branch is breaking everything. It was just coming straight for me. Yeah, I, I've had that happen to me one time. And unfortunately, I had to go toward the sound to get out. Oh, and that was that's not fun. <laughs> oh, see, there's, there's lots of things on the no thanks list, right, guys? Yeah, so. exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, keep in mind as we move through everybody that these have been recorded over years. They've been Donna and David have been teaming up on this for a very long time. So you mentioned uh hearing something from your side door which sounded like uh, you know slapping on your on your tummy or something like it was just a weird sound right. that you couldn't quite put your finger on and if you guys are okay i was going to go ahead and start here at the uh, beginning with these uh, yeah. first the the real gorilla chest beat right david this is a pulled from wherever Correct. this is an yeah. actual gorilla this is a, yeah this is right. a recording i pulled off of a youtube video of a, you know, so I, I, I watched the gorilla as it made this slapping sound. All right. So you can also hear little huffs and grunts, too. I mean, it seems to be making some other noises as well. Yeah. So here's that. Here we go. The next one is is a comparison uh, to to uh, the gorilla chest beat. It's something that Donna recorded. Okay, so that was going to be my question: Is this one is actually from Donna's property? Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. yeah. The, so the the one that I was talking to David about, you know, that was before we were actually recording. So the one that I was the one I was talking to David about that I was describing, like the only thing I can think of is, you know, I was pounding on my tummy trying to make that sound. We eventually did. We get a recording of one of them. I can totally see you doing that, Donna, because you're you were just so you know hell bent on trying to figure this out, and I don't blame you that I could. I love you for that because I could see you beating on your tummy or something to like. What is that noise? <laughs> well, uh, I, I'd like to add just a little bit more to this. Uh -huh. um, we don't have. I, I didn't include it, but there is a whole category that I call drumming that Donna mentioned before that we did record on their property. In other words, they're banging on all sorts of different uh, things in a rhythmic sound that it, it can only be described as drumming. It's not wood knocking, but it's, it's a drumming. And including one time uh, we finally figured out what it was they were drumming on, which was a, uh, one of those green um, lids to a, a sewer system, you know, about eight and 18 inch green lid. It may had a hollow so had, sound. Yeah, that, that country that country homes have, and it was sitting up a few inches. You see that? We finally actually, it took a long time to figure that one out. Actually, I think it's uh, connected to the underground spring. So I think that that's it's running through a, a system there. Anyway, there's a vent there or a lid there, but it sounds like you're banging on a garbage lid. That that, that they did that numerous times. So there is something to, besides just a, a chest beat, uh, a drumming sound that seems to be a, appealing to them. And this was, this one is, I think, akin to a gorilla chest beat. Just really quickly, sorry, before we move on, have you guys ever captured them trying to mimic David's very unique mouth pop sound that he can execute? Oh, good question. Uh, maybe. Um, I haven't. 
I, I haven't been looking for it specifically. It got to the point there were so many wood knocks that I didn't I didn't keep clipping them. Right. I have a I have you it, know it became old it became old yeah it became old hat hearing the wood knocks. I mean it really did, which is kind of weird. Oh, that's just another wood knock. Let's move on. But there's different wood knocks that we would hear, which yeah. would be interesting to go back to see if any of them were mouth pops. Because, you know, there's the Madonna trees, there's, you know, softwood trees. So that's interesting. We'd hear them knock on, you know, fence lines on the fence. I, let's just say this, uh, Shannon, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, considering that they are master mimickers, uh, which we will get to, and people may be a little bit shocked by what they will be hearing. But, yeah, that was just something that, uh, I, was, that I was wondering. Good yeah. question. All right, you guys ready for the know. the loud whoop? Yeah. Are we going to play the the real beat? Or did you? Play oh the, no, uh, I didn't. Oh. oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, I see. I I get off track and I get yakking and I didn't even play the one. Okay, so here is the <laughs> the real gorilla or gorilla, the real chest beat from Donna's property. And there she is. Yeah. Not a gorilla, guys. That is whatever was on the property there. And, and keep right. in mind, everything is recorded right off the right off the deck right there on the railing. Which made you feel really good because that means they're pretty much right there. <laughs> quite pretty close. close. Yeah. yeah. You're pretty sharp, Shannon. You picked you pick that I, out right I, I'm having a good day today, David, but, you know, I, <laughs> things could turn. <laughs> Yeah. All right, loud, loud whoop time. Anybody want to comment or are we good to go to the next? I just, I don't want to keep going yeah. through if you guys have anything to add. I, I, I wanted to include that because everybody, uh, well, not everybody, but it is a, is a very common sound that, researchers have heard that they are attuned to. So I just wanted to let other researchers know that, yeah, we recorded whoops. And here's one of the old hat sounds, the the wood knocks that they have yeah. come to, to learn of very, very quickly and very well out there. How boring. How old hat? I, would, I mean, really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, old hat. You know, that, that's a hardwood. That's a hardwood. That would be like a Madrona tree. Yeah. Like on a Madrona tree. It, it, actually, listen to that again. And now think about Shannon's comment. You know what is really cool, though? And, of course, I was being facetious, but... It is extremely rhythmic. There is, you know, there's not a lot of uh, letting up when I think these things, like Donna was saying how when she was being flanked, right? And I know that's loop, but when she's being flanked, that's knock, knock, right, right, knock. Like it was always, it, the timing of these things is quite spectacular. Again, th these are looped sounds, but th this is another theme that comes up when we talk about Bigfoot encounters is the fact that uh, they're watching, then this is how they communicate, and these knocks are usually uh, very timely, is my long-winded way of saying that, so there you go. At another location, when I had an exchange, I would do three wood knocks, it would do three wood knocks. I would do two wood knocks, it would do two wood knocks. So there was some sense of Oh, gosh, what's the term I'm looking for? They're aware of sentience. They're aware of their presence. They know what they're communicating. It's not just a, a bird making a call. They're doing it for a specific reason. So, Well, yeah, and then it sounds uh, like they're mimicking at that point, right. it sounds like. And, yeah. Yeah. See, Which we'll get into some more. <laughs> yeah, and even even before talking about mimicry, which is a whole other blow-my-mind thing, even if I had just what we were talking about and the, with the wood knocks and how, you know, tongue in cheek, how boring it's not, but I would be very humbled by that. 
what you said, David. I would do three, they would do three. If I would do two, they would do two. I'd be like, holy crap, like this is insane. Yeah, we're communicating, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, uh, I, I, I had that happen more than once. Um, so it wasn't just a one-off. But yeah, if you get into a situation, see if you can get them to go back and forth with you. Yeah, be careful you what you wish have- for, though, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's do some rock sounds here. Rock bouncing on uh, wood metal. She'd seen sticks and heard sticks and things being thrown. So this was just an object that we had captured on audio. The, uh, a rock had was obviously thrown because you can hear it skipping across the deck. And then it clanks into um, a metal fence gate down below the deck. So, so what happens is uh, that the, there's a, the deck where I put the, the recorder out, the steps going down to the back from the deck down. And then at the bottom of there, there was a, a little metal gate there. So something had thrown a rock and it skips across the deck and then ends up clanking against that gate. All right, next one is Possible Scream. You guys want to set this one up? It's a distant uh, scream that most people would uh, recognize as a shorter version of the long scream that uh, is people are maybe familiar with, but it has the ooh-ah sound to it. So it's, uh, it's highly suspicious. All right, this next one, it's one of my favorites out of the list. I'm sorry, but you guys are in for a treat if you've not heard these sounds. This one is titled Family Disagreement. (laughs) And I label that because you can hear what I, I'll use the term alpha because it's a a low sounding vocalization. It sounds a little grumpy. And then it's like something... Maybe a juvenile or a spouse <laughs> um, registers their uh, feeling about the scenario. And I'm reading all kinds of stuff into it. It's just kind of fun. And then there's this huge uh, wood knock uh, power strike that says enough. And then in the actual recording, it goes quiet for the rest of the night. The first thing I thought of was that sounds like uh, Jurassic Park or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. T Rex. Mm, that would that would shut me right up. I'd be like, okay, I'm sorry, Dad. I I will not uh, I will not do whatever it is <laughs> you want me to do anymore. Nope. <laughs> yeah, somebody was laying down the law. My goodness, a series of guttural sounds. Yeah, it's just we hear lots of different sounds in the woods, but these are very peculiar. Not quite sure what to make of these. And keep in mind, everybody, that 
depending on how long it takes to go through audio, which took, I would imagine, oodles and eons of time. But yes. Donna is at her house by herself, and she is getting sent these files and realizing that that's what's going on pretty much out her back door. So. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, I, you know, you get to a point, there's one point where I just kind of, you know, I stopped listening. Could you listen or, you know, David, like I said, is, is, is very generous um, in teaching you how to, how to do this, you know, and we were sending stuff back and forth, but, you know, I always send stuff to David. He always picked out something different because he's so much better than I am at it. But he, um, you know, you get to a point where you just, you know, you just have to take a break sometimes. And I, I remember doing that. And, and David remembers when I would just send him stuff. I didn't want to listen to it for a while. Because you think you have a quiet night and nothing's going on. And then all of a sudden you realize it wasn't so quiet and this was going on outside. It's interesting, isn't it? David was. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, as, I, as... I certainly wouldn't have wanted to be in your position. Yeah. I understand um, that it was not easy. So thank you, Shannon, for pointing that out again. Uh, David, it may be too early to ask this, and maybe I should. Well, no, let me just go and ask. Was there an audio clip that you heard where you got concerned or where you felt like, you know, at all? Well, that's the question, I guess. Where you were concerned for her safety or that, hey, they're they're too close or whatever this sound is, is, you know, they sound angry or not. It's not good. Or was there ever a time for you personally where, where you got to that point? No. Um, I got the notion right away that if anything was going to happen, it would have happened prior that whatever was going on was meant to show their presence, but not necessarily to be any kind of a threat whatsoever. So yeah, no, I never, never got to that point. And if I did, I would have, I would have said something to to Donna and Greg. No, I didn't want that's, that's my dog Rex. Sorry about that. That's all right. He wants to make a. Ca- he's a cameo. It's cameo time. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I wouldn't have done that to Donna or Greg. Yeah, if there was something that 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 would have gone beyond bluff, bluffing, we would have we would have noted it prior to. So no, uh, they they just have, were going about their business near as I could tell. And they weren't going to vacate the area. That was that was pretty well known. But um, uh, on the other side, I don't think that they were going to do anything about it. That doesn't seem to be their strategy when they're dealing with on the edge where people live and they live. All right. Next up, sounds compared to Sierra sounds. Will you guys set this one up for us? Sure. Uh, you may be aware of Ron Moorhead's audio the sierra sounds they're very distinctive uh we captured something that was we thought might be comparable and so i clipped it and sent it to ron with the clip that we were comparing it to of his so i sent him ours and his and looped it together and he came back to me and said why are you sending my me my my stuff and i said no 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 ron <laughs> that first part of the clip is what donna recorded it's not one of your recordings and we went oh so it's 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 comparable to the fear sounds it's got some similarities it's also a little bit different but it is we're kind of ramping up towards uh, voice and that seemed to be what we're we're recording here now, just so you know, the, the percussive sounds that you're hearing are raindrops, and I, I, I couldn't edit all of that out without destroying, you know, the meat of the sound we want to hear. So those percussive sounds that you're hearing in there are raindrops. And these, are, these this is the sound that was recorded at my place. I think the next loop you're going to hear um, what's recorded at our place and then or what's recorded at uh, what uh, Ron recorded and then what I recorded. Yeah, the, the second Together. clip here is what, what I sent Ron. And you'll, you'll hear Donna's recording 
looped with the Sierra sound recording. But you'll still be able to tell the But the similarities are, I, I think, are there. You know, when you take a look at, you know, when Ron's and then you take a look, it's, it's that same type of gibberishy mm-hmm. type talk. Next up, we are, we're going to, like we said, we're going to start getting into this here, guys. Uh, we've got some singing now in this next clip. Yeah, it's one of the categories that seems to pop up in every study site that I've worked across North America. Uh, there seems to be this penchant for, for whatever reason, carrying a note and changing it fluctuates. So I think you'll see why I say this is akin to singing. So this is just one of many, uh, this is just an example, if you will, of of this attribute. So there's many more, but uh, this one I liked a lot, so that made the cut. (laughs) (laughs) Donna, at night, I would imagine that, I mean, if it were me and I, you know, you, you have to live there, it's your home. Did you have three different white noise machines? I mean, I know that a lot of these you you didn't hear. Uh, you wouldn't have heard when it was actually physically going on. You heard it after the fact, after David found them on the spectrogram. Right. How many of these sounds did you hear? And you're like, oh, well, that's going to be on the recorder uh, for tomorrow for David. Oh, my. oh, yeah. No, and that happens, too. You know, there's a there's one sound. I don't it, we don't have it in the mix here, but the very loud, very loud. And it woke us up. You know, both Greg and I in the middle of the night, it was a scream. And sometimes it would be the dogs that would, you know, start, you know, they would get excited or they start pacing or, you know, they, they never um, bark per se when we were upstairs, but they would do this pacing thing and get real nervous. You know, a couple of times, you know, you, you'd kind of wake up and hear something. But I was also, um, I put stuff in my, I plugged my ears, either listening, you know, listening to the sounds, you know, before I started um, visually looking at them. Or I'd play music because then you, you do, you, or you, you're like surprised. Why didn't I hear that? That's obviously pretty loud. I must have been really tired and asleep. So it's just, you just, it just depends, you know, where your mind is at at that moment. And, you know, you just kind of, you have to come to a point where you kind of move on as best you can because you just never know, or you get used to there not being anything. So you don't expect anything. And then the next time you look at the, the spectrogram, you know, from the next, cause I'd take a look at, you know, bring in the recorder maybe take a quick look that day and see how the night went. And then you're like, Oh, wow, there's a lot of activity. Why didn't I hear that? Or, you know, I definitely heard that. And then you, uh, I would, a couple of times I'd go out and, or I'd shout out the top window or, or, you know, or notate it. I should say not shout the top window. That was a Greg thing, but, you know, notate the time and, you know, go back and take a look at it. But David knows there's a couple of times where Greg would open up something, the window or the thing and yell out that he heard something. Or, yeah. you know, the dog got nervous or something. Yeah, we've got it recorded. Well, that's, I think, the last one, actually. We'll, we'll get Greg gotcha. saying something. <laughs> uh, next up is Wahoo the Baboon. Okay, so, uh, Shannon, have you heard that Daniel Boone shot uh, Yahoo? Have you heard that story? No, I have not. Okay, so there's folklore in the Appalachians that Daniel Boone, when he was uh, growing up at some point in time in his life, uh, came across a Yahoo, which is a a slang for a Bigfoot, and shot and killed it. So I was, I've always thought the term Yahoo was kind of interesting as a description for Bigfoot. It's kind of like, you know, maybe a sound that they make. And so I, I was on the internet doing a search for Daniel Boone killing a Yahoo just to see if there was more information that I already knew. And I came across this YouTube video that was labeled Wahoo 
the baboon bark. And I thought, you know, that's just a little bit too close. Wahoo, Yahoo. Uh, I'll, I'll give this a listen. So I, I, I looked at it and my jaw hit the floor because I recognized this bark or this barking sound that the baboons make. Uh, Donna had actually recorded it. And so what we'll hear first is uh, a five-time loop of an actual baboon doing what they call or is called the baboon bark. So go ahead and play that one. So can you you, you kind of hear a Yahoo, Wahoo kind of a thing going on mm-hmm. there? So I mean, when you're looking at it and stuff, you can actually on the on the video and so forth. When they're making that noise, they're actually sucking in, and then the the walk, you know, the sucking in, and the other part of it, it's the it's the expression of the air going out. Exhale. Exhale. And so, the next uh, clip is, in fact, on Donna's property. Yes. Correct. <laughs> little bigger than a baboon, I would say that sounds like. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Similar, yes, but... Um, hmm. <laughs> See, I'm on it today, David Arnold. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> I know. No, in, in all going. honesty, though, if a real baboon got face-to-face with whatever made that noise, I think the baboon would be like, I'm out. See ya. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You could just hear the power of the <laughs> thing. It's astonishing. Yeah, but could you hear the the Yahoo kind of a thing? Going yes, on there? absolutely. Well, guess what? It's recorded all over North America. This isn't the only one. You don't say. So, I do say. <laughs> I, do say. <laughs> I love this stuff. Can I just say that right now? This is great. I <laughs> love it. Yeah, it's one of the things that I look for. You know, people will send me. Can you hear this scream or this knock and? And I'm looking for other things uh, that I, you know, cues. And this is one of them that, you know, usually doesn't get uh, noticed by other folks, but perks my ears right up. Next up is labeled voice. Yeah, so we're kind of uh, going toward, you know, talking. It sure seems like we're hearing something talk, but I, you know, I'll let you hear and you, you determine what you hear. Now, Donna, as we move in through these clips, and now we're starting to hear possible speech and things, is this the point where you're going, okay, maybe I don't want to listen for a little bit? You know, it's, it's a couple of these, and we'll get, I think it's, I think it's like the, the third one from now. It was, happened very, like within the month of recording the very first time, and I, I was just dumbfounded when I heard it. It's it's the sheer volume of things happening, and then you know with the horn vocal. I think it was very shortly, David, if I'm wrong, not wrong, after the horn vocal that I needed the break. That you know, yeah, there that, was that, always that horn vocal was the one that pushed you over the edge because, like you said, you could feel it and uh, you could you, feel you, it and you, stuff. You... I just need I just needed a break where I just didn't, you know, I, I just you just feel like, and, and you know, it's funny you say you need a break, you realize it's all going on and things are still happening. I just needed a break from hearing it all the time um, because not all of these I hear, um, but I just, I just needed that small break. So what you heard there, it wasn't after that. It was, it was basically after the horn vocal that I needed, I needed a, a small, small break, but it's the sheer volume of hearing all of this. I mean, it's, you know, like I said, you know, we'd do a couple of weeks of not hearing anything and then we could have two, three weeks of lots of activity. And, you know, we'd always try and pinpoint it. Is it, you know, moon phases, you know, I do think, you know, they don't just stay there. I think they, you know, we, there's things that would happen. And keep in mind, this is just a, a short, you know, very small amount of what we actually have. Them coming in, what appears to be them coming out of the ravine, you know, at night and a sound of something going back into the ravine, you know, just before daybreak. So it's, it's, it's knowing that something's there and you're still trying to figure it out. You just need a break sometimes. 
Next up, Crow Talker. Yeah, so Crow Talker is just a category that I came up with. This is my personal category. Uh, I've noticed across the country that there is a certain tenor in some of the vocalizations that sound like a crow, you know, talking. You know, crows can talk, but typically not at 3 o'clock in the morning. So what we're looking at here is a category of sound that Donna recorded that I'm hearing all across North America. So it's not just on her property, but it, it's something that it, it piques my interest. Yeah, just let that all sink in, everybody. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not just on Donna's property. Like you said, it's all yeah. across North America that I'm recording some sort of vocalizer that that vocalizes like that. That, uh, and I don't know. Maybe you, maybe you could hear that some of those sounds weren't exactly like a crow, but some of them sounded more like a crow in the beginning and then towards the end. I mean, it's very, yeah, it had a very gravelly sound to it, which is something mm-hmm. I've yeah. always agreed with, with the labeling of this particular clip. You know, it's something right. that, you know, if you heard during the day, you might associate it with a crow or something. But keep in mind, all of these happen in the middle of the night. These, these are, you know, way in the middle of the night. <laughs> right. Okay. We're going to preface this by saying it's it's pretty much go time. And if if you folks out there have not ever heard these particular clips from Donna and Greg's property, you might be a little bit surprised, uh, to say the least. So uh, Come Here Kaya is the first of kind of what is a a grouping of what I would say are the same types of things going down. But if you guys could, this might need quite a, a bit of setup maybe, you know, to talk about what's going on here and things like cadence and uh, what sure. normal people do when you have dogs about? Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and set up uh, just a little bit here, and then I'll let Donna chime in. But I try not to lead witnesses along, um, you know, listen for this or listen for that. or I, I think you might, you know, at some point hear this or that. I, I try to let it happen and then have Donna or Greg discover it first. Well, one in time Donna says, do these things mimic? And I said, well, I got a recording for you uh, that I recorded in 2007. Uh, I was with my wife and another witness working in the area and I was walking with a bionic dish. If you're familiar with that is it allows you to hear deeper into the woods. It's a, um, it's a device, a listening device that I had attached to my recorder at the time. And uh, we had our dog named Kaya, and she was off leash. And uh, I was hearing something in the brush, uh, and I separated myself from the witness and my wife and the dog, Kaya, and was listening to this, whatever it was, moving around in the, in the brush. And and at some point in time, it went quiet a little bit. So I decided to move back up with with the witness and my wife and dog. I kind of told them what was going on, that I had heard something down in the valley. The dog was panting and she was near the recorder. The witness picked up on it and he wanted to call Kaya away from the dish, you know, so that I could hear a little bit better. And he called the dog to leash her up. And immediately after he had called or hailed the dog, come here, Kaya, 
uh, you will hear something that uh, attempts to say that, not real clearly, but clear enough that you can understand that that's, it's a mimic of what was just said. And you can clearly tell that it's not the same person, nor an echo. <laughs> So that's what I sent to Donna, and I said, you be the judge. You tell me. You know, Greg and I, you know, we'd be out working out in the, the yard and stuff, and every once in a while, you know, Greg would be like, did you call me? I'd be like, no. You know, and, and vice versa. Did you call me? And no. You know, we keep hearing odd things, you know, just... Well, that's weird. I thought I heard you. I thought I heard you call me. And then I, the next one you're going to, you're going to hear we'll, 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 the next one you're going to hear, which is we call, I call it the wookie whoopee. Uh, this no, is actually, the one that. Uh, it's not the wookie Is it the wookie? Yet. No. It's, oh. Uh, Layla. Yeah. Ah, uh, the Layla. So, and Greg would, and this particular recording, um, and it's, it's interesting because Greg wasn't there because Greg would go out at night. Or Greg, when Greg was there, he would let the dogs out, or, or and even during the day, and he would call them back in. He would call them in a certain way with a certain cadence every single time. But when this was recorded, Greg wasn't even in the state. He was, you know, he was out. He was gone. And you know, it's it's funny. You know, I I, t- I was telling David, but David, I can prove it because you know, I, we've got receipts for you know his hotel, his airplane, and stuff like that. But when you hear this, there's something calling the dogs. In Greg's cadence. Well, let me do uh, let me do Layla Bridget first. Okay. Okay. And remember, guys, what she said about the cadence. That is the exact cadence that Greg would call Layla and Bridget. Right. And it sounds nothing like Greg, as you know. But, um, you know, I always, I told David, you know, when I was hearing that, I'm like, you know, it sounds like um, if you ever, if you've ever had, um, you know, a deaf person when they try and talk, it's like they're trying to to, to talk, but they can't hear themselves either. Um, it's just a different way of, of the way the words come out and so forth. There's, but that yeah, yeah. it's not clear. It's tonality, yeah. yeah. All right, let's listen to this one. This one is just uh it has Layla in it. What do you suppose that what's knock sound is at the end what's there? Interesting is, uh, there's a wood knock. I don't know if you caught that okay, or not. not. Yeah. That's the sound that you're talking about at the end. Yeah, that's what I was asking yeah. about. Yeah, so you think that's a wood knock there at the end? Yes, that's Layla wood knock. Mm. Layla wood knock. Yeah. Now, what about the not only the cadence, but the really? It's almost like it's trying to get its voice higher. Like, would Greg do that at some point if he was just calling Layla? You know, he he might. Um, Layla sometimes would not listen, so he might try and get it louder. Right. I don't know if he'd get it higher. But um, definitely louder. I, you know, it's, it's just, I, you know, I don't know. You know, it's, it's interesting. You know, from the first one, the, the Layla, Layla, Bridget, um, that, that sound at the end, and then just the Layla. Um, I think there, there is difference, and um, one's a lot more clearer, obviously, than the other. I think, you know, we have to think about where the recording is and how far away whatever it is saying it. Um, are the different distances, that type of thing. But it's just very interesting. And, you know, obviously the first one is, to me is very clear what it's, what it's saying, the Layla, Layla, Bridget. The second one, I mean, we have to listen to it, um, but it does sound like it's saying Layla or trying to. Trying to, yeah. Quite well, though, yeah. honestly. It's like yeah. it's close, but not quite. Right. Exactly. Which, yeah. Which would creep me right but out. No offense, but that would creep me right the hell out if I knew that that was going on in my backyard. Uh, there's just something about them t- talking and, you know, the the Sasquatch or the samurai chatter, which we're, I want to definitely talk about my time up there with you guys, which David and I 
uh, right. experience that on a walk back to your property. Anyhow, the speech thing is just astonishing to me. And I have, of course, that, go, no, go ahead, Donna. Does that just blow your mind away? I mean, that's what yeah. blew me away. I was just, you know, there's, there's a couple of things that really blow me away. You know, first of all, I think one of them, of course, I told you I talked about the three places, but to actually realize that these things can communicate with you, whatever is doing it, you know, we don't, we're not, I'm not seeing one talking to me like that or saying that, but something is definitely mimicking. How about the first time you played the, especially the, the Layla Bridget clip for Greg? Oh, <laughs> yeah, he was just, he was, I actually sent it to him because he was, of course, gone. Um, and he played it, you know, at his at an office someplace. I can't remember where he was at exactly. But, yeah, he was dumb. I got a phone call right after it. So he was just, that, that floors him to this day. I mean, he's just, he will talk about that because it, it's the same cadence. It's the same cadence as Greg would call him. That's what, what's so crazy, too. It's not just the mimicking of it. It's the mimicking of the cadence of how he would call mm-hmm. and the wording. Layla. Layla Bridget, that or Bridget, you know, she'd say Bridget, but that's exactly what he'd do. The same, I mean, all the time. I mean, we even have him recorded doing that, but it's not, this does not sound like Greg at all. It's just interesting. But he never heard that in person with his own ears, right? No. Can you imagine, no. though, it's enough to hear it recorded and cleaned up and played back to your, your back to you, back to yourself in, in your cadence and, and all of this, but I just, I think it's a, probably a pretty good thing that uh, to hear yourself mimicked back to even kind of sort of oh, badly know. would, I don't know. There's just some things I think that it's a good thing that there's a line and it you wasn't hope, crossed, you know? Yeah. Hopefully you would have your adult diapers on or something because exactly. I, I just, yes, I love you. Yes. <laughs> diapers, brown pants. That's what I talk about with this stuff and amen to that. Cause yes, that would be diaper time. You know, if you're, if you're outdoors and, something is talking back to you in your own cadence uh nope yep, but there's no parrots that we know of in this area no all right next up you've already mentioned this one donna but uh just go ahead and set it up again is a uh, whoopee or a wookie wookie whoopee 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 is what i call it so this is like the first month i think we were recording it's so loud and so distinctive and you know i know where i placed that on the railing of the you know on the railing of the deck this had been so close, and this is the first time that I had I heard and, and, and David heard something like a talk, kind of like a talk, being done there, you know, that loud and, and just so clearly. So, go ahead. It's just interesting to me. Yeah, this one, um, we actually had Greg walk around on the property and from different locations try to, to, to actually mimic what this sound is. The only way we got somewhat near it was when he got closer, a lot closer. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure where the subject was, but it had to have been close. Also, Donna and that's what, alluded that's what we were trying. Yeah, that's what we were trying to figure out when we had Greg go around is trying to figure out, especially in the beginning, how close these things were coming to, to get the sound into the recorder. Right. Yeah. Uh, we weren't sure. And so we thought we'd do an experiment and uh, Greg had to get within I guess maybe 75 feet 50 feet again before it got and it wasn't really close as far as I'm concerned it it had whatever it was that we recorded had a very big depth of volume that Greg did not have so I, I was pretty sure after that that it wasn't Greg which you know, I didn't really suspect that there was, but we could prove it now uh, for the skepticals. Where? Oh, I know. Donna alluded to this earlier that she heard this in person, uh, in real time, this particular voice. Um, I didn't include the loop because there was a, another one that I wanted to work in. Um, but essentially, something is up by the neighbor's gate and they have an electric uh, fence, and you can hear the car coming, and it's it's doing this whoopee whoopee type voice that that's very strange. And it, it's then it starts to move, and you can clearly hear it going down the ravine and getting further and further away. And then you can hear the electric fence open up. So something was 
this whatever this creature is was up near that gate when it started to open and it, it yeah not not off. this recording but yeah not this recording but another another at another time another recording we don't have on here but, but so this voice time. i've heard yeah this voice i've heard in person yeah and this is the one that changed greg's opinion that there's something going on <laughs> How far into things was this recording? When, you know, when did Greg hear this and go, holy crap, okay. So this was within the first month of getting the recorder from David. Oh, um, gosh. <laughs> wow. So it was, and I remember very distinctly, um, I, that was at the time when I was listening to stuff in my headset, you know, the recordings of the previous night or the night before or that. And I heard that and immediately shot up and was, I was just like playing it over. I was by myself playing it over and um, dumbfounded and getting that thing, you know, clipped up, which I think I waited to the next morning. Cause at that time I'd have to go across a certain area of the house and up, and up the stairs to the other bedroom um, where all my, where the computer was and, and clip it out. And I sent it to, to David, just that section of it to David, like immediately the next morning, that's probably the first email he saw. Uh, it was because it just blew me away. That just blew me away. I mean, think about that. We have not had seen any of the other sounds that you guys are hearing so much. I mean, the wood knocks, the this and that, and then to have something say that, you know, and to me, that's a language, that's language. Those are language skills. And to do that was just, that blew me away. It, it blew Greg away. That's when we're like, whoa, you know, what, what is going on here? And it had to have been so close to to the recorder i mean you can you can actually hear the volume of it the the depth of it anything to add there david or you want me to get on to the the last clip here oh yeah we can move on to the next one this is where uh greg i was listening to the audio reviewing it the way i typically do and i caught where greg mentioned that he thought that denali one of their dogs had heard something and was acting strange and he said you might want to review the audio so i did i went back and actually buried in the audio deep uh, i had to pull it forward um, because it was it was barely there but it was there something had disturbed the dog and it uh, wanted to come inside it was it had heard something so what we're going to hear is greg uh, alerting me that maybe something had um, disturbed the dog and I might want to go back in the recording and see if there was something. And this is, it was the whoopee voice. So there's no question about who the character was. David, I just let uh, Denali in who is running in the house scared now. I don't know if you hear something before that happened or not. That's astonishing. So something was messing with the dog. Yeah. <laughs> near, near as we could tell. And um, Denali, she was just a puppy then, wasn't she, Donna? Yeah, she was. Yeah, they thought what would happen, you know, where I'd go out and put out the recording. Um, they could go out and um, there was a doggy door. They could go out and they would sometimes sit on the outside deck there, kind of by the recorder. But, yeah, she, Denali was just a puppy. We didn't have a Donali very long. Well, now she's a big dog. 
Wouldn't we love to know what, what in the world are they saying? What, what is all that? Good question. Yeah. That's, you know, then that's exactly what, you know, and I remember, you know, when I was doing all this research and, and I was trying to figure out languages, you know, Native American languages, you know, languages that have been around in this area for a long time, you know, could they have picked up on that? What, you know, what's going on? You know, obviously I think they have their own language. Um, I just think it's just a whole lot of things we just don't know, but it's, it's, it's kind of fun to find out. And I think that, you know, we always need to keep our mind open. Um, you know, not everything is, is Sasquatch related or what we believe to be, or if that, if you want to say that, or, or we're not sure what it is, but it's interesting, isn't it? Now, Donna, you mentioned earlier that you guys at, at some point in time you had goats, uh, and having mm-hmm. been there, I can't remember now if you told me that because the, the chicken coops were there. Did you actually have chickens at one point? I can't remember that part. We did. Um, the chicken coops were not there when we first moved in. There was a garden there, and there was just a small little fenced area for that garden. And then the rest of it, real close, was all real thick. So when we cleared out a bit, you know, we were into, you know, doing a little, I guess you call it homesteading, but having chickens and stuff like that. So we, so we got some chickens, and there's a, a real interesting story with Pete the chicken that uh, peep, uh, you know, they come in at night, you know, you saw the little, the little barnet type thing, um, chicken coop, they would go in at night and go in there and, and peep actually went missing. We couldn't find peep and we were looking for peep and you know, all the chickens were really good about going in at night and peep was gone overnight and um, into the next day and we we're looking around for it and looking around for it. And I think it was David, you mentioned, you know, asking for it back, you know, <laughs> and um, I did. And well, what was that, David? Let's, let's, let's back up just a little bit. Wasn't Peep a, a really special chicken as far as all the chickens went? I mean, it would fly up and yeah. perch on your shoulder. So, yeah, Tom Baker uh, even had, had a, has a picture of it, Peep on the shoulder. Now, it loved to be on, perched on your shoulder, perched on Greg's shoulder, perched on, you know, if you came over, perched on other people's shoulder. It just loved to be around you. So and for it to disappear... That, that, that's kind of pertinent, I think, to the to the story. If, if something is watching this particular chicken fly up and perch on shoulders, it it may have sparked an interest. So you exactly so, you said that you asked for it back after David had this uh, pretty cool and wild idea just to simply do that. Yeah, yep. and so I he says no matter how you know ridiculous you think you sound. Go, you know, go up to the wood line and ask for a bat. Say you miss peep or whatever, however you want to word it. And I did. I'm like, this is so stupid. And so I went and did it and came back an hour later and there was peep. Unharmed. I was unharmed. Yep. Put back was, in, was, put back into the pin. It was back with the other chickens. Yeah. Oh, my God. See, now, I completely forgot about the peep story. You told me that in person, and somehow it completely fell out of my head. That, wow. So, you know, we w- realized that the chicken could have wandered out in the woods and been by itself. Exactly. And just circumstances that it came back. But this happened a couple of times. <laughs> so, I don't know. You know, for having it, it once was in, interesting twice. Three times, people go gone, just gone. And you would have to ask Never. for it back each time? Yes. Oh. Yes, and then it would come back. What and then the it, I know. It's just, you know, just little instances of oddness all over the place. And it's yes. stuff that, you know, that was not on our radar before. And like I said, you know, when we first were reading stuff and, you know, when I first saw the Sasquatch, you know, you read stuff, you think, that is so nuts. That's not nothing. You know, like like anything that you know, that's not what happened here and stuff. But you know, you go down that rabbit hole, and as time is going on, you know, weird things happen, and there's no explanation for some of it. it just, these are just instances of of random things, um, but adding them up to a whole, something obviously was going on. Mm-hmm. Man, I totally forgot about the peep story, which is such a cool, weird, crazy story. Exactly. And it's, it's just one of many. I mean, we have, um, David doesn't have it on here. We don't have it to, to, to play it for you, but we have a, a doll story um, <laughs> where I did not tell David about, uh, uh, I found a doll. <laughs> what? 
I said you snuck one in on me. I did. That was I was at CVS Pharmacy, and I, I there's a doll, <laughs> and um, it was a little cheerleader doll where you push the button on the tummy, and it would do this little uh, song, sing song thing. And I had put it down on that uh, bench that we were talking about before with the peanut butter jar. And I put it down on that bench and just left it there. Never think twice about it. And, you know, one time it was knocked over. It was there about a month. It didn't seem like anything was messing with it. And I eventually just, you know, brought it back in. And then David was listening. I think it was during that break time because I wasn't listening to anything. And David asked me, he goes, what parent lets their kid out in the middle of the night? at nine o'clock I'm like what are you talking about and he sent me this this thing and it was the voice of the doll something had pressed the voice had pressed the button uh, for the tummy and then it was the sing-song voice but what was really interesting is before daybreak remember I talked to you about something going back in we thought felt that that voice on that doll went again so just as it something might have been coming out right after dark and just before daybreak something going back in both times the the button was pressed well, what's interesting uh, from my part of the story is that, you know, I, I was lagging maybe two months behind uh, real-time recording at this point in time in, in analysis. So it was sometime February, March, and, and I believe you had put that out there sometime in November, December. Yeah. And I, I asked Donna, uh, boy, something really weird happened in one of the recordings uh, last night in I went back and I figured out that it was like nine o'clock on a Sunday night. It was like a school night. And all of a sudden I heard this sing-songy voice that sounded like a, a, a child, but I couldn't quite make out what it was saying. It was some sort of a song that, you know, I thought maybe a child's song or something. And then it went quiet. And then an hour later, I hear this same sing-song sound, which is now 10 o'clock at night. So if you think about it, nine o'clock, maybe kids are still out there, but 10 o'clock on a Sunday night, a school night, you know, in the, in the deep of winter, kids outside, um, don't think so. Then uh, the whole night goes by, and at six o'clock in the morning, one more time, this sing-song voice thing happens again. So it happened at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, and six o'clock in the morning. Something pressed that button to make that doll make that the, the sounds. And okay, this this doll obviously has some clothing on it. I'm assuming, right? So it, the button would be covered. Does. So when I was when I put it down there, and I was down there with the dogs, I played with it. I was pressing the button when I was playing with it. When I before I put it down, before I set it down. So I know. So when I was down there, and the dogs were with me, and you know, because I'd take them walking in this area that was or like a daily thing pretty much for us. Um, I was messing with the doll. I had it in my hand. I was pressing it and stuff like that. Um, and then I just left it down there and left it for like a month. See, and if that, doesn't, anything, if that it, doesn't prove how much you were being watched, I don't know what does. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It would not have, yeah, because it would not have seen the button with the clothing on it because I had the had a little cheerleader it was blue and white had a little cheerleader outfit oh man it's just in, mm-hmm. it's so cool and creepy at the same time <laughs> so creepy mm. yep really creepy yeah. so the the poor peep uh got uh, the brunt end of some of that if peep could talk I bet peep would say please make me an indoor chicken um what, <laughs> <laughs> What about the goats? Did they ever mess with your goats at all? You know, it's funny. I, we think, um, you know, when the recording of the, the, the thing skipping across the porch and stuff and hitting the gate, the reason why we had um, the gate down below at that time, I kind of had like really funky set up because what happened was is that we hadn't built that fence yet. And somebody was giving away these goats. They were um, they were withers, which means they were male goats and fixed. And, and nobody wants those type of goats if they're raising goats. And they were cute. So I thought they'd be cute. I'll take them. So uh, we had kind of made this little thing underneath the deck. Well, that's we'd get lots of activity for a while. Um, you know, things being tossed at their little... I had a little area where I made a, a place for them to 
to have shelter until we get finished out that fence line. And then also, you know, we'd already started that fence line because we wanted to separate something out because, you know, I, I wanted some separation after the hat instance. So things are being tossed at them. I think that they probably were great entertainment for them. Um, when they went out into the pasture, uh, sometimes we would hear something play with the fence line, um, but not like, in a mean way, like running their, running something along that little, the, the, like the two by four wire fence that you have at farm, uh, just running it along and, and plunking away or throwing something at them. Um, but I don't think they were being mean. I just think they were trying to get, get their attention. One thing that I did notice, I, I was hearing some odd uh, huffing sounds that Donna pointed out to, and maybe some sneezing kind of sounds. And Donna pointed out to me that that was uh, the sounds of a distressed goat. So That's true. I think I think that the goats were distressed, but I couldn't hear anything in the audio that was distressing them. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, there there were some subtle cues going on because the goats seemed to know what was going on, but I couldn't tell uh, from the recording what that might be. I didn't hear anything specific that they they did but something definitely a couple times really stressed them out and and just like peep they're like bring us indoors please you don't know well actually you do know what they were seeing never mind what what am i saying you do know exactly what they were seeing you saw it twice Uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna hit upon peep one more time because i just think that and i can't believe this fell out of my head but this is astonishing to me okay david's had already (laughs) alluded to the fact that peep was more possibly more important to you. You had a connection with that chicken over the other chickens. It would fly up onto your shoulder, and I get the connection with birds. I have birds. The thing is, if we're assuming that a Sasquatch is what grabbed Peep because of the fact that, by God, you went and asked for it back, and it came back more than once, it is astonishing to me because that was the one that was important to you. They had their, you know... That's a food source for them. It didn't hurt it. It didn't eat it, kill it. You didn't find its carcass somewhere. They returned peep. That is astonishing to me. All right, I'm done. I'm, I'm done with the peep thing. I won't go back to it again. I just had to say that. <laughs> well, well, you know, um, take that a little bit step further. We had a, yeah, take that a little step further. We actually had a, I had a clear plastic, you know, dollar store, um, little plastic candy dish type thing. I, I did something with the church um, and I had those and I super glued it on the fence post so nothing could take it over. And I had actually put, you know, as a, I don't know, we'd come up with these crazy things that would just be crazy and you think you're crazy. And you talk about a food source. So I put three eggs there, right? Kind of like, well, oh, here you go. Thank you. And two eggs were gone and one egg was perfectly cracked. Remember that, David? Perfectly cracked. Yeah, the was, was gone, but the, yeah, the egg like was still there. It looked like you were going to fry an egg, and I mean, it was no shell, zero shell. The yolk was unbroken? Zero shell. Yolk was, yeah, unbroken. Yolk was unbroken. You got Chef Ramsay out there. What the heck? How, that, yeah, that's pretty I mean, crazy. Crazy stuff, you know? And you're like, and you're, and you're like, okay, I need a break. I mean, this is the stuff that would go on. And <laughs> oh you're like, gosh. this is crazy. I mean, this is the crazy stuff I sometimes would read about. And I'm like, this is crazy. No, I need something a little bit more realistic. I know what I saw and stuff, but it's, you go down this rabbit hole and, and, and you realize that, you know, maybe these people aren't as crazy as you think they are. <laughs> well, stuff happened. We, and you took pictures of it. Yep. So, you know, I, all we can tell you is what happened. We, we can't tell you. If if the assumptions are correct, you know, are we assuming way too much here that, you know, the Sasquatch uh, took peak? Man, yeah, did peak come back on his own? I mean, I mean, you yeah, hear about I mean, chickens going out. We're, we're aware of yeah, you, that. We're aware of that. We're not, yeah, you hear about chickens not, going out on their own and, you know, going away from and, high, and laying eggs someplace else and, and sitting on them. Um, and keep in mind, there's no male chickens. We didn't have any roosters. But to have it come back is what is interesting to me i mean if i would have found peep with a with a pile of eggs that would have been great for me but having him come back or having her come back and then you know and it wasn't like oh geez she went missing the next night 
it was a ways away that she went missing again, and I had to ask back for Pete back again. Was there any evidence of how Peep got out? You know, was there a hole? In the, did you ever, I mean, I'm sure you would have said this. Was there any way that you could have been like, oh, this is maybe how Peep got out or got back in, whatever? No, no. I mean, Peep had that well, whole, as you know, the that whole area the chickens had, they never came up, you know, they had that fence pasture in, which had the the things where the chickens would stay in the pasture area. They never went outside of it. Right. Were you going to say something, David? Uh, well, if Peep could fly up to your shoulder, it could have flown over the fence. Yeah, that's true. Don't but ruin my don't ruin my vision, David. It's a Sasquatch. Dang it! I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you have to uh, look at all the possibilities. Um, this, Sasquatch is one possibility. The, the other is, like we said, it just went out on its own and then came back and right. we're tying two circumstances together. But the other is a possibility too. So. Well, and, and chickens are not the, the the brightest, the sharpest tack in the box, the brightest bulb when it comes to birds. Uh, Donna, <laughs> Donna well knows that I have parrots here and they're pretty damn smart. Uh, but that's not barring, like you said, saying that the, that peep could not have figured out how to get in and out of there. So yes, definitely. Right. And it's just, the, it's just the timing of things. I mean, it, it's not, like I said, it's not unknown for them to go out and, and maybe have a, a whole hatch of eggs or whatever, um, and sitting on them, uh, if they're broody, but, and, but we didn't find anything, you know, we looked. Well, if you put it all into context of strange things, a lot of strange things happen here. It's not that weird, actually, uh, David. No. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. Okay. That's a good segue because I have been to your property. I have met both of you, yep. spent some time with you guys, which was amazing. And uh still talk to you guys, obviously, to this day. One of the things that occurred during my time there is something that I still, to this day, talk about all the time. Uh, I've never seen a Sasquatch, but I have had possible, and just like David has said many a times, all of us have, and Donna too, possible Sasquatch auditory experiences, because I didn't see what was making the noise. I cannot say it was a Sasquatch. I say that all the time so that nobody can mince my words. But there's a group of us there for a particular project. The group of us were down actually the road from your property, Donna. And right. David and I had split from the group and we were walking. This was later in the evening, obviously, after dark. It was dark. And we were walking back to your house. And off to our right, I heard three syllables spoken. And and this is, of course, one of the ravines that you spoke of. It's very dark and deep down there. Couldn't see a thing, but I heard three syllables. I hear this and I go, David, did you hear that? He goes, yeah, tell me what you heard. Because David's really good like that. He's not going to lead people he like is. he says. What did you hear? And I repeated the three syllables of what we would pretty much call samurai chatter and he goes oh yeah those are the three syllables we hear out here all the time and i'm like oh my gosh this was you know i was blown away because i've had very few really experiences that i feel are remarkable enough to share and that was certainly one of them like i said uh, when i go on other shows i talk about that That was just such a cool experience. I do know that my daughter was there and had heard something down in that ravine prior to us hearing. I mean, they, they caught up with us and mentioned that they had heard something down in that ravine. So th the notion that something was there was real. Yeah, we did hear, we did hear some, some sort of chatter going on. No, and it was very much like... Donna said it was like a deaf person trying to speak and it was heavy vowels, you know, it was three, it was yep. three vowels, but I, that was always so remarkable to me. 
And you know uh, that that re- go ahead. No, no, you go. Well, no, I you know that reminds me. I was before David, I, and I remember um, you know David used to tell me I used to have to you know I should be out there walking with the recorder when I go out during the day, and I never did. But I remember when you talk about vows, it just clicked off a memory in me, and I think maybe maybe you'll remember too. I was um, very loudly. It was like an A and an E sound in an A E type of type of sound. It was uh, very close. Remember that, David? I called you. Yeah. Because it was yeah, so very very close. I don't know if those were the two that you heard, but yeah, very, there, there's a lot of volume. I don't think people understand when you're hearing this stuff the the depth of the volume you're hearing you know these opera singers have all this mass volume that they can bring out this sound out of it's almost like that it's not like you and I talking or screaming or anything there's a volume to these sounds that you don't normally hear yeah and that's what's striking about it because immediately you go well a person couldn't do that they couldn't replicate that sure we can all say a e i o u and all this other stuff but we can't replicate right. the power that goes behind those. Correct. That's exactly right. If that hadn't have gone on, on that property, you know, at all, or if you hadn't seen it, maybe it's a two-part question. Maybe you just get the auditory stuff going down and the dogs are freaked out and, and peeps like maybe being abducted and returned by Sasquatch. If if all that hadn't have gone down, would you still be on that property? You know, it's interesting. Um if all those sounds are going on, well, first of all, I probably would never have recorded. I never would have, have noticed all the other stuff. I think that once I saw saw what I did, the Sasquatch, that December, it makes you hyper aware of things. Um, I think a lot of times people are not aware of stuff that goes on. You're not looking for it. Um, there's oddball things maybe going on. Um, you know, I think, oh, what's going on? You know, the, these doors coming open or, you know, Greg's doing it or the sounds. I mean, think about it probably wouldn't pay too much as sounds because we weren't recording at night. Um, you know, just, you wouldn't have noticed as much. If the, if, if there was no, if I did not see what I had, if, if things were not going there, I probably would have not have pushed to move. Um, but at that point in time, I really needed to break away. I also um, had gotten a horse, which was a good excuse. I didn't want the horse on the property. You know, I had, a, I had her, um, she was with, you know, the, the an arena and stuff like that. But I, um, I, yeah, I would probably, you know, for a good part, probably still would have been out there. But it's, it's hard to say. You made the mention of, you know, the way things were out there and stuff like that. You know, when, when you and I, when you came out and we had our, you know, the group out there and we're going to be working on this project. You know, one of the things, you know, that I get asked quite often is, you know, about telling my story, you know, fully and so forth. You know, at one time I was going to. We had that project in the works, and, and what happened is it just wasn't a good fit. I I have another so, question that might be complete. It's another speculative, I, I'm assuming, unless you keep in touch with people. I'm just wondering what happened in that area after you guys, after you moved. Oh. Well, there's a couple you know? of things. One thing, we were having people come in and work on the place. Remember that, David? And one of yes. the worker guys was coming down. And it was not, it was on the second, let's see, one second switch back from where I saw it. Um, he, they were coming right. off for the day and he actually saw it um, on the, the coming down the, um, the second switch back from where I saw it. He saw it. He saw one coming down and, and Shane talked to him and so right. forth. The guys were giving him garbage, but the guy was swearing up and down. He, he saw a Sasquatch right there. You had talked to several other people that lived around the area that had strange things that they could relate as well. So so what kinds was, of things uh, were they uh, saying? Older, like, yeah, yeah there's an older lady, an older lady and an older man. They'd been up there. They'd go away during the summer or wintertime and come up in the summer. And they had an apple orchard. They were on the very top, a small one. And she was talking, to, you know, they were coming down. This is after I'd seen it. And we started going on. And um, we were talking about... You know, she was there talking about animals, and I was telling them all the things that we had seen, and and she said yes, and bigger, and and some bigger things too. And I'm like, like what? She was just bigger. And when I got to know her a little bit more, um, she had been out in the apple orchard up by her place, and something was just in the tree line, and was shaking things at her, shaking bushes at her, 
and it's trying to scare her to get away from the apples. I, I bet uh, at certain times of the year, her apples would be completely gone from probably some pretty high places. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's happened to our tree where all of a sudden the apples were gone in one night. Just totally gone. Uh, you go out there and they'd just be just about right. And all of a sudden, you know, you'd eat a couple off and, and stuff like that and start eating on it. And then the apples would be just gone in one night. And same with the grapes when the grapes started producing. But it was, oh. it was really interesting when you tell me the vowels, you know, that reminded me of the vowel sound that I heard. Mm-hmm. And it was very, I, it, I, can, I can picture where it was at, where this thing was at. It was during the day and it was very distinct. It was very, um, the volume I kept, and now I remember, you know, telling David the volume of this coming out and it was vowel sound. People always ask, why didn't you get a picture? But the thing is, you'd have to be on edge all the time. And some of the things, I mean, like, you know, we put out the, you know, put out those cameras, those night cameras. They would actually, I mean, you know, Derek was there. I mean, there would actually be like, they'd walk around it and go in another way. And we actually found a footprint on that knoll, that hill. Remember that? I think that was before you came. Derek saw it. They would purposely avoid the cameras and right where they were. So when we when we were first when we first moved there and, and all this is happening, we went out and, and got field cameras. So what would happen? Um, we we sat there and we put these trail cams, you know, right there, thinking, okay, we're going to get this shot. It's going to be great. And and this is before we really started talking to people. Um, you know, we had talked to Derek, but you know, we don't we never got into depth with things. So we put the trail cam out, thinking, okay, we're going to get this shot. We're going to have it. And it sat out. It sat out. We had you know weird stuff happening. We thought we'd get it. And nothing. But there, on the other side of the camera, there's this knoll, and there was a footprint right there. I mean, it's, it went out and around it. And that's when um, we started reading, and, and you know, David shared later, and and even Derek that they think you know this the infrared or whatever it is that that the cameras detect emotion, you know, the motion of something, and take the photo somehow that they can see that. That's the theory, anyways. Mm-hmm. But it's they know, or maybe it's because something that looks like an eyeball is looking at them, um, you know, with a little yeah. red shine or whatever it is. But there's something there that they know to go around it because I do, it was just like, it was so much easier just to go straight into the camera than to go up and around over a knoll and back down. But there was such definite footprints. It was nuts. My current feeling on this is, is that the lens looks like an eye and what does an eye do? An eye sees. And what do these things hate? They hate to be discovered. They really dislike right. uh, us knowing their, about their presence. So they uh, will go completely out of their way to make sure that the eye doesn't see them. So I, I don't, I mean, it's pretty hard to believe that they know what a photograph is or what a camera is. But they certainly right. know what an eye, the eyeball does. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe there's experiences. I don't know if all trail cams do this, but, you know, you get the deer ones, and some of them take, do these loud, you know, big flashes and stuff like that. Maybe they have experience with that. I don't know. But I think the more we find out, the more we realize what we don't know. And But then sometimes it clears up some things. But definitely went around it. That's all I can say. I don't know why, yeah. but it, it went around it. Well, you guys tried. It's all you could do. Uh, they they seem to outsmart most of all of these trail cameras so far. We haven't gotten uh, anything that is going to change science's mind uh, via the trail cams. That's for sure. Yeah, Shannon, you had asked if anything had been, you know, or if they were disturbing the goats. Well, uh, didn't we move the trail cams up to, to be on the goats, Donna? We, we did. In fact, we got a couple more and I'd move them around the house a little bit when I, cause we were getting um, slapped quite a bit, not, you know, like every single night, but it was happening enough that I just wasn't feeling comfortable. And so we would move, um, we moved the cameras around the goats. And I, we, I thought maybe that they were coming in closer because of the goats when I had them underneath the decking until we finished up the fence line. And then we moved the cameras around the goats, the goat pen, you know, pointed at the goat pen. Uh, so that hopefully that they would be not bothered. Did that work? At least then maybe the audio, you weren't picking up quite so many snorts yes. like from the goats. You know, okay. Yeah. I didn't remember that. David obviously did. So I, I, 
yeah, I mean, the ghosts were never harmed. I mean, obviously, they're distrustful. You definitely can tell, you know, whether something's being banged on or something like that. There's a thought, you know, the, the goats do this stomping sound um, on the ground. Uh, it's very, very soft um, and very easily to distinguish between that and, let's say, a knock or something banging into something. Um, but once in a while, you get this, um, they, they do this little tiny stomp if something's around they don't like. And once in a while, we heard that. Yeah, some sometimes you do hear of them coming in and they actually will kill livestock. So that's why I, I'm glad that never happened and, you know, peep turned out okay and all that. So, well, And you hear of them killing, a, a, you know, I'm thankful that the dogs came back and, and didn't go after them per se because one of the things that um, it was Bobo that was telling me about is how they um, have – you know, torn dogs up, you know, taking them and killed them. So thankfully they didn't, they knew enough to stay back by us. Yeah. And, and there was one time that Greg and I went down into the ravine early, earlier on down in one of the side ravines. And we came to a point where even Layla would not go any further. You just, there was this eerie feeling where you just knew not to go. And we came right back out of there, but there was a, there was a big uh, toe print of all things, like a part of a foot, but the toe, the big toe was, was huge. Very clear, too. Maybe it was a thumbprint. At that, I, you know, I'm not an expert. A really quick question here. Concerning the Layla Bridget and calling the dogs in, in Greg's cadence and all of that, I, I'm assuming that the the dogs probably weren't allowed outside by themselves and such, uh, besides the fact that you didn't want to have to go out after them or whatever the case was. But do you mm-hmm. think that they were actually trying to get the dogs to come into the woods with them, or they were they were just mimicking his voice? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, and, and you can go either way. Since they didn't seem to be wanting to do harm, I don't think that they were calling them in. I think it was just that they did when they saw the dog. It was, a, a you know, oh, I know what that is. That's mm. the dog. That's Layla, the dog. You know, when, the, when this happened, if I remember right, because, you know, go, you would have to go back and get the exact time unless it was written down. Um, on the recordings, these are recordings. This, that recording was done, of course, when the dogs were in. So unless they saw the dog, which would be hard for them to do from the window, because if, if it was dark, we'd be upstairs. Or, you know, if one of the dogs, which, you know, if I was asleep or something, if it went down and went out the, the dog door out on the deck, which we did not hear, we would have, you know, heard that on the recording, maybe seen it then. Right. But, you know, if you know, if you think about the times that, you know, something scared, um, Denali or something scared of another, you know, we've had a couple of times. It was because they were hearing, hearing these sounds, hearing something do this gibberish talk or, or saying something. And then the dogs would come in. So the dogs were very much aware of what was going on. And I don't, I, the dogs would not go out to that. Yeah. I don't think they would in any way. Uh, it is, it is possible at, at certain locations to see into the house. So they could see the dogs theoretically when they were inside the house too so you know a recognition thing could have been happening and they were voicing that's Layla I, I didn't even think about this but you're talking about the sliding doors I never thought about that yeah hey David before I let you guys go can I get you yeah. to you know talk about uh your your documentary and stuff I want to make sure that people check that out oh Let's see, uh, Sasquatch Among Wild Men with Darcy, producer Darcy Weir. We have a 10-minute cameo on this hour uh, documentary. It's a very important 10 minutes. Don't diminish it. <laughs> that is way cool. No, I'll, I'll yeah. link that in the show notes for everybody. But I was, uh, I was checking that out uh, a couple nights ago, so I wanted to make sure we mentioned that. Okay, yeah. So... That's one of the things that we've done. Um, also, with the documentary with Seth and uh, your crew, that was a lot of fun. So th- that's, I don't know when that's coming out. It possibly this year, Shannon? I think if so. You... Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and might I say how so, bummed I was that I, I didn't, I was not able to go on that trip. Can I just say that right now with you on, on the line yeah, here? But yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, you can't. Uh, we were, we were bummed that you couldn't as well, but life happens. Yeah, we we understand. But that that documentary is uh, 
that's that's going to be something because took the crew to the nest area, and so there's a lot of information that uh, was gleaned that I think your crew is going to get the first crack at the at revealing what, what we have kind of kept close to the best. Yeah. So we're about Seth and and his his pet crew. They did a great great job, by the way. We're excited about what's going to happen. I couldn't look at the photos that that they were posting. It was too painful for me. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Uh, <laughs> they I were in there. I could have been there. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I have to shut my phone off right now. I can't look. Uh, will you do one more thing? Sorry, last thing. Olympic project. Will you plug the website and where people can find you and Derek and Shane and all that? Sure. The Olympic Project dot com is a web page uh, on the internet. You can do an information search for us. Uh, you can put your sighting, do a sighting report there. Uh, we have lots of fun information, lots of uh, papers and things that we're interested in, how we go about doing our business. And if you want to send me an audio, you can send it to my contact on the olympicproject.com page. The, they will automatically send me the email. Anything under 20 megabytes, uh, I can handle via email. So if uh, you've got something that you want me to review, I'll be happy to do that. Awesome. Thank you so much, David. And I have kept you guys half of an entire day, so I will let you go. But uh, you're both wonderful human beings. Thank you so much for for doing this, and I'm proud to know you both. You are so sweet, because we are proud to know you. But this has been a great opportunity to get this out there. And thank you so much, and thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you very much, Shannon. You've been a wonderful host and with great questions. All right, you two. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Well, I'm so-and-so. I was given this name by my parents. I've been to such and such a college. I've done these things in my profession. I produce a little bark. Buddha says, forget it. That's some story. That's all gone. That's all past. I want to see the real you you are now. Well, nobody knows who that is. Because we don't uh, know ourselves except through listening to our echoes and consulting our memories. But then there's a real evil, and that again leads us back to this question uh, Who are you? That is the real evil. We shall see how they play with this exam by the cohorts to get you to come out of your shell and find out who you really are. That after your funeral, you know, you will.
will suddenly become somebody different, living somewhere else. They will say reincarnation means this, that if you sitting here now are really convinced that you're the same person who walked in at the door half an hour ago, you're being reincarnated. If you are liberated, you will understand that you're not. The past doesn't exist. Zen master Dogen put it this way, he said, the spring does not become the summer. First there is summer, and then there is spring. Straight, 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 straight. 